and it's designated for statements that are concerning items that are on the agenda. Hi, I'm Paula Clark, and I live in Highland Ridge here in East Lansing, Bath Township. I'm here tonight to talk about the agenda item about COVID safety at the Senior Center. I am very, very concerned that from the feedback I get, there is very little being done to enforce any kind of protocol there. It's haphazard at best. Um, I'm one of the people, like many of you in this room and others in this room, that fought very hard and worked very hard to make this Senior Center happen, and I want to continue it to happen. I want it to be there forever. But if we have one death or one serious outbreak there, I think we will lose our senior center. I'm very concerned that this board has not taken the issue of COVID safety as serious as they need to for a group of collected seniors in one place, many of whom are extremely vulnerable. And I'm asking you to please review that and consider it and be as strict as you can. You're gonna get a little bit of backlash, but not nearly as much as if you have somebody over there get sick and die. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Clark. Looks like. Good evening. Marie, where's the table? <laughs> <laughs> Good evening. My name, my name is Judy Gardy, and I'm here to talk about the budget and the budget adoption process. The budget that's presented to you tonight is not really a reflection of the work and the effort that's been put forth by the community. Where are the CIP recommendations? 2020, the, one of the recommendations was that we repave the playground at Wishwasher Park. That is our most used community asset. I didn't see it in the 2020 budget. I don't see it in the, I mean the 20. 21 budget, I don't see it in the 2022 budget. Working together, Friends of Park Lake, the Park Lake Advisory Board, Parks and Rec, and the Planning Commission has been working toward the development of a nature trail around Park Lake. I don't see that in the budget either. All the time and effort, the hoops that you've asked us to jump through that we've jumped through, all the research that's been done, all the work that's been done, it's really important that you listen to the community voice, that you honor the work that people bring to you. The Park Lake Advisory Board member, Mary Schaefer, has invited Karen and Joe to go out on a pontoon on the 14th of September at three o'clock to review the most recent August 2021 weed assessment survey that was done by Dan Hayes and one J.B. McComb, a, a resident around the lake, and to look at the situation the lake is in right now related to the weeds. The invitation has not been accepted by the township. Karen has been invited and Joe was invited because he is on the Park Lake Advisory Board. Weed treatment has to be a priority for the park, for the park, for Park Lake. It also is not included in the budget, and Karen told me just before the meeting that that was an oversight, and I appreciate that. But moving forward, my question for you all is what is the process? How will the decisions be made? Who will make the decisions? Will the decisions be made in public? And what opportunity will we have not to stand up here like a a talking head, but to actually sit down and have a discussion. Thank you. Thank you, Jason. How you doing? I'm Rob Moe. I live in Mead Creek currently. Um, the agenda item we're speaking on, speaking on tonight, is the one that deals with the Cherry Street abandonment from Clinton County. Um, this was something that we started, uh, and it's been two years at least, um, that we started this process, um, blindly going through, not understanding what needed to be done. Um, we finally got uh, some information from Marie, who helped us uh, push it through. I went and got a petition signed. We got the seven um, freeholders uh, for adjacent properties. We got everything all straightened out. Clinton County um, put it on their uh, agenda. Uh, CCRC went ahead and um, abandoned the property, so it's now been turned over. And this is where we're at right now in the process. And the adjacent properties and the freeholders that signed it. Um, 
we're kind of at a standstill now because we're not really sure what needs to be done next step. Um, our uh, um, end process of this was to get the uh, land subdivided off um, to the adjacent property. And um, we're kind of at a standstill with the township now because apparently it's on a plot or a plat um, that needs to go through possibly circuit court. The information that I had said that if all parties are in agreement, it doesn't need to go to circuit court, that we can simply just go ahead and change the plat. Um, I don't know if it's that simple. I talked with Ryan at length because I don't like to type, but we typed forever um, on the subject trying to figure it out. Um, you guys are waiting, I guess, from an attorney to give you uh, some direction on what you can and can't do legally um, or what would be in the best interest of the township, I guess is what Ryan likes to say. Um, so we're kind of at a standstill right now, but it has been an ongoing pro um, process that we've been working on for a while. It's not one that uh, just popped up on a whim. Um, I started going through this thought process back when you, know, you passed the railroad where it used to be, and now there's, you know, the people are able to uh, uh, improve the property um, because it's owned now. And that's kind of what we're looking to do here. You know, we're just trying to take the property over. It's been abandoned. It's been a plot since 1857, I believe. Never been uh, deeded to anybody. And the landowners now have come together and said, hey, we would like to go ahead and, uh, and get this property and uh, so we can do with it, you know, make improvements on the property. So that's really about all I got. It's kind of a little bit of background on that. Um, thanks. All right, is there anybody else? Please it's about time for the power to go out. <laughs> Hi, I'm Ray Kotke, Park Lake resident, Bath Township resident. And my uh, topic here is the 2022 budget. And I noticed it was a, a little while ago in the Friday report, um, Taylor put in there about taking bids to uh, take down the, uh, the old Gupta property that's adjacent to Wiswasser Park. And I just wondered where how, how did the township, I assume the township has that property now, and did we buy it, or was it willed to us, or gifted to us, or? I didn't see anything on the budget about that. That has to have been $100,000 property. So where did, that, where did that money come from, and who made the authorization to do that? Because uh, I didn't ever hear anything about a public meeting or anything. And also I noticed uh, $100,000 for paving of Wish Walter Park on there. Um, we certainly don't need any more asphalt runoff running into the lake the uh, and I and I and then I recall that uh, Becky had a CIP that was for putting the the cushy surface to renew that so I didn't know if that's what that was for or um, if it's for real asphalt that present that present property is is uh, covered with permeable crushed limestone that's compacted and as such run runoff can go right straight through it into the groundwater Whereas <clears throat> asphalt cannot, that it literally runs off and if you notice, asphalt gets, turns lighter and lighter gray as it ages and that's because the oil that's in it runs off into the groundwater. And where is it gonna run? It's gonna run right across the street into the lake. So um, crushed limestone that's compacted properly is ADA compliant and I noticed that it's uh, a lot less expensive to, uh, to repair and to, and to maintain as well. And again, it's pretty for groundwater. Last thing I want to talk about is, or bring up, is uh, I didn't see any money in there. I think Judy mentioned this already, that, that Karen mentioned that it was an oversight, but I didn't see one penny in there for Park Lake uh, weed control, which is usually anywhere from nine to $25,000 a year. Um, or, we, well, I said weed control, or tra uh, trail development, which, you know, we've, as she said, we've jumped through a lot of hoops and taken a lot of time and effort over 10 years to uh, pretty much try to answer any questions or obligations you guys have for us in Parks and Rec and, uh, and the Park Lake Advisory Board. And also, um, but to this date, you know, there was a public meeting as well and there was wide public approval and request for a trail. But I, I don't understand, I just, I don't understand why there seems to be such a reluctance to go through this project. 
And the last thing is, uh, I didn't see anything in there, and it may be under the general budget or something. I don't understand the budget that well, but uh, the goose food problem. Park Lake is uh, is what, when everybody says Park Lake, they say, oh, that's bad. Park Lake is bad. Bath is Park Lake. And, uh, you know, some people don't agree with that. I don't think any of you live on the lake. But there's, you know, 120 of us that do. And uh, when we see our lake on the news every single week saying that it's, that it's uh, infested with E. coli, and as of yet, we don't know where that came from. And one of the reasons back in 76 we put the, the sewer around the lake was to prevent that. And I still strongly believe that it's the geese. And the lady is still feeding the geese. And I saw another couple out there feeding them yesterday, right on the beach. So something's got to be done, and it's got to be done aggressively and uh, soon and often and regularly to remediate this problem. So I drove down 100 miles from near Cadillac to attend this meeting and <laughs> hope I didn't offend anybody. But, uh, Thank you very much for listening to me, and uh, think about Park Lake, because just like I said, Park Lake is bad. Thank you. Thank you, Ray. Is there anybody else? All right, do we have anybody from the county, state, federal, or other agencies? <laughs> you guys can on the phone. Uh, what is this joining us from the Michigan um, Health Department and she'll be speaking to the item over vaccinations at the senior center because she does have another meeting to attend, so she's going to be her talk now about that. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Hi, good evening everybody. My name is Liz Braddock and I'm the health officer for Mid Michigan District Health Department which covers Clinton County. I I was asked to come here today to talk about vaccine COVID-19 um, policies and what our recommendations, our guidelines would be for the um, senior center. So as you know, we are, we are pushing vaccine in, in, the, in Clinton County. We have vaccine available. Our rates are just below 60%. We have high vaccination rates among the seniors. However, we, we have no verification if you're 100% with attendance at the, at the senior center. So we're always encouraging vaccine. The question came up, can you mandate vaccine? My answer is, is that we are, we as public health cannot mandate vaccine anywhere. We do not mandate vaccine in our office. We do not encourage, we have not mentioned here that Bath Township should encourage vaccine. It is a choice that people make. However, vaccine, um, is something that we are encouraging as a mitigation strategy to prevent the spread of COVID. We are concerned that those who are immunocompromised are more likely to, to be um, susceptible to COVID vaccine. You may get COVID breakthrough if you are considered immunocompromised. We do offer the third dose to those that are um, considered immunocompromised, may have some underlying conditions. However, we are also concerned that the Delta variant and other variants are more likely to infect uh, those who are unvaccinated and those who are unmasked. So if we have vaccine, if we have mask in a location, we're doing the best we can to prevent those strategies. We also know spread of COVID is more likely in indoor locations and also in locations where there is crowds. So when we are considering a COVID-19 safety policy for those in a senior center, we need to look at a lot of mitigation strategies. So maybe look at things like requ uh, requesting that people get vaccinated, requiring, since it's in your building, masks be used, other than when you're eating and drinking or if somebody is unable to due to medical condition, we would consider um, social distancing and then we would also consider what the ventilation of the room is, that, um, where the activities are. We're also very aware that we are trying to include as many people as we can, and the issue of, of inclusion does come up with those who may, may or may not want vaccine, or the same with may or may not want to wear a mask. mask. So I would encourage you to p consider having a policy in place here for those who wear masks, since you are possibly unable to ask those who are coming into the building what their um, vaccine status is. So if you have any questions, I would be willing to answer any, or, no? I, I, I do have a question. 
Um, so you had indicated that, uh, I just wanted to clarify, uh, is it the official position of MidMichigan Health Department that vaccination is a personal choice? Yes. Yes. It's, it's a personal choice. It is, um, it t talk to your, um, your medical provider. Uh, we are encouraging it, but we, we are, we have the, there is no mandate for my staff to get vaccinated, and there is no mandate anywhere in, in the state right now for a vaccine. We are just highly encouraging it, yes. At this time, I'm going to ask the board if there's any questions the audience might have to her, if this might be a good time to help her into this whole class. Question that she can ask. Anyone's thoughts with it? Doesn't appear that there's any support for that. So if you've got a question, you'll have to wait and ask her. Uh, Ask Liz on her own. Thank you. Thank you, Liz. Why don't you go back up to the podium? Because you didn't use three minutes and ask her a question. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Again, Judy Gertie, uh, this time as chairperson of the Senior Services Advisory Board. Paula, I hear you, and I understand you, and I often serve as the mask police. <laughs> This is open for public comment too. For this is not public comment. No, sorry. This is, I, no, I understand. <laughs> I thought when you came up that was a confusion. Items for county, state, or other agencies. Good evening, all board. This I'm Dwight Washington, 4600 Clark Road, and um, it's really great to be here and to see that people are together, people are um, working and talking with one another, even though that people do have a mask on. And when I walk in here and I do see everybody wearing a mask, I, I think that that's a sign of a community that's taken COVID seriously, and I just want to give kudos for that. Um, I, one of the things that I hope to talk about today was about the, from the Michigan uh, local public health department, but Liz was here and she addressed that, so I think that's satisfactory. But I would like to say that many of you, or a number of you may know Marcus Chino, who has retired now, and Liz has taken his spot, and she was highly recommended by Marcus, and she has a background in environmental health and had worked with the department for a couple of years, and it was really well received by the department, so we're very excited to have her in this position, as rocky and as rough as it may be right now. So again, I want to wish you the best and continue the good, good work that you're doing. Along with that, one other thing I want to bring up is that um, the Honorable Michelle Rick, our judge from Clinton County, is having her um, investiture. So she is uh, getting in place as on her Michigan Court of Appeals that you know where she is voted by the citizens of Clinton County and other places. But that's moving ahead, and I just think that's awesome when somebody from our community does do well and, and exceeds and, and takes a leadership role in our state. Um, I also wanted to let you know, and I know, Marie, that this is important to you because you've been in attendance at many of our Clinton County board meetings in the past, but the budget is being discussed in the Ways and Means meeting tomorrow, and there's four general assumptions that we're, under, that we're proceed, proceeding for, and I thought it would be beneficial if you knew how the philosophy and the direction that the uh, county was going. And really, the primary one is due to unknown course of the pandemic, much uncertainty remains. So we do plan to take a continue to continue take a conservative approach um, in our finances. And given the nature of local government finance in the state of Michigan, revenue growth is limited, so we're not expecting a lot. Um, meaning pension obligations and capital improvement needs will continue to be challenging, and finding room in the budget for new programming will be difficult. And this is our. This is a summary from our um, Craig Longnecker and uh, our new county administrator who is, who is um, following up on the work that Ryan had, had done. And that's my report for this evening. Is there any questions? How much money are you expecting from the county or at the county from the federal ARPA funds? 
We're expecting around 14 million. And we have not had discussions in depth on that yet, but there's a general outlines of, um, of pockets and what we think that we'll do. A significant portion of that will go to the general fund because we feel that we lost the, that revenue during the pandemic. And so with the ARPA fund, we have to replace um, that money that we was lost. Will there be any engagement of the local government authorities and how the county might want to spend that? That could come up this week in terms of discussion, and I'll take that point forward and let them know. It's, it's, it, again, we haven't gotten um, to that point yet. It's, it's really trying to, I think our philosophy has really been to, to, to get through the pandemic in as steady as way possible and then to re-engage with the economy as, as in a way that um, you know, we, we best saw fit. And that was really to give the community kind of a, a heads up. And we're hoping that people were to get their mitigation strategies together. And again, I look in here and I see like there's six, well, there's two, three feet between chairs, but, you know, the mass, the chair space and the clean air. And, and hopefully the communities and organizations got that together. And that's been our focus. But I, again, I think that I appreciate your question. I'd like to bring that forward to Thank you. I imagine we all would love to see more investment from the county in Bath Township. <laughs> okay, well, thank you. We'll <laughs> vote to receive uh, the consent agenda. I move we, we approve the consent agenda. and a second on the floor. Yep. Mr. Benzie? Yes. Mr. Wisloxer? Yes. Ms. Howell? Yes. Ms. Butler County, yes. Mr. Rosemary? Yes. Mr. James Bliss? Yes. Mr. Amariti? Yes. changes that were requested to be made, were those made? Yes. Okay. And you read them, Marie? Minutes, yes. What changes? In the right? No. The only thing that I have a problem with that needs to be removed as far as I'm concerned is the part where it says Supervisor Howell briefly lost control of the meeting, but she doesn't say how she lost control. So that's kind of left out to, if you want to bring in, my point would be to eliminate it, but if you don't want to delete it, then I'd like to know how. These were the minutes that you had requested for that change to be made. Did you find that sufficient? That was I didn't request any changes. Yes, you requested yes. the change. That's why it's on this yes. agenda. <laughs> There's something you had said and you wanted it uh, clarified. It, it clarified being it's your public comment at the end, or okay. like your board comment at the end. You wanted me to add, she doesn't excuse herself, but feels communication is a two-way That's what you're talking about. Okay. Is that needs to be changed. Yeah. Sorry, Eddie. No. That was, now I get, but it doesn't, it's not in here. Is it? Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. Not in line. Yeah. 
Okay. 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 Okay.
all the county tax for the county people. I don't see the county people all left us, but uh, they, they get their uh, money all, all up front as well in the summer tax that they allocated goes to the county and they split, split that out. Uh, for school districts, we have East Lansing schools that get 100% of their tax in the summer tax collection as well as the Ingham uh, ISD tax that's in their area and the LCC. Hazlitt schools gets 50% uh, of their taxes collected. Um, they like a little money in the summer and they get the rest of it in the fall. Um, they also collect their ISD for Ingham and their LCC. Uh, by the 15th of September, all taxes are due without 1% interest. Um, with on 1% interest. Um, so that has to be done um, by the 15th for the residents in order to save their interest on their taxes or paying interest. Deferment of uh, free, uh, for interest free deferment now, there's a lot of folks that qualify for that. It's a big thing. Um, I, I, I'm gonna tell you this, I hope I don't forget somebody, but 65 and older, uh, paraplegic, uh, any medical condition, uh, agricultural exemption and uh, there is one other one that, that's it's a poverty exemption type thing that you can defer your summer taxes till the winter till February 14th um, and not have to pay any interest on them. Um, that pretty well sums up the taxes. Um, I'll, I'll say this because somebody probably here is going to say well what's Bath Township get for the summer taxes? We have the, for the administration fee for the summer tax roll and that includes the payment for the assessor, for, the, for two people in the assessing department, as well as the taxes and the, and the software for BSNA for the assessing and the taxes and the treasurer's department and collecting up front and the wages and everything, we get 102214 which is not a lot of money when you look at what the budgets are for some of these um, departments. Um, but that is what we get out of the summer tax collection. Now in the winter tax collection, you will get money too, but we're not, we're not to that point yet. Um, with that being said, I'm going to talk a little bit more about this because we're going to deal with it later in the evening. Um, we're going to deal with our 2021 tax rate request for our, what's known as our L4029. You'll see that that's on the agenda. Um, up uh, to this, this year for 2021, because that's what this is, with all taxes reflected in the rear for 2021. The taxable value of Bath Charter Township is up roughly $19 million from 2020. Uh, it's $18,989,678 is the difference between the taxable value between last year and this year. So we have increased the taxable value, we're building more houses, we have more going on. That's the reason why some of the bills increase around here as far as fees and things for collecting and running the government and, and doing everything you have to do. Um, that's about all I got for you really tonight. I can give you some more information. I can go on for a couple hours here if you want to do. We probably don't want to hear that. Um, but that's where I'm at. Anybody got any questions to the board, I'd be happy to answer them. Yes, Mr. With the dissolution of the DDA, will this be the first tax collection that the money goes back to LCC? And, and um, in, in the event that the DDA does not uh, meet their, uh, I believe that the, there's a seven day, uh, if I'm not mistaken, there's a seven business day um, um, window of opportunity for appeal. But with that not happening, yes. But once the, the um, DDA, when the winter tax roll will be signed and the tax bonds and the, and the tax database will be signed by myself and the treasurer of the county, um, the, what will happen here is that the DDA will no longer be capped, tax will be captured. The correct word for that is because what they did is they captured taxes from Bath Charter Township Police and Fire, as well as Bath Township Operating and LCC. With that being signed this year, with that dissolution being being um, legitimate as what it was as it was, it was found that way in court last week. Second, um, that will happen. There's a little bit of uh, um, um, scrutiny on that, but that I believe that after um, Treasurer Ward and I uh, from the county uh, get together on the 30th there and sign the paper, I think it's uh, pretty well done. And, and it's what it is, it's not the DDA, it's not the DDA district, as you know, if you read the language, it's, it's included, it's still included, and then you retain the reserve the money that's there that Bath Township will have into it to retain it, to restrict it, excuse me, and they ought and we put it on to, I heard a lady talk tonight about a CIP project. That is something that we'll talk about in budget workshop. Um, and and uh, 
that will be part of the budget workshop. However, um, the, the, what you did do away with, by doing away with the, with the disillusion, is you did away with the tax increment finance agreement, which is the TIF agreement. They no longer have a, 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 a uh, lever or an arm, or they don't have any capability of capturing taxes for the tax increment finance act. That's what's one way. Mm -hmm. And that will that will take and, and yes redirect all the tax funds back to the taxing units and the only two taxing units there is is Bath Township and LCC. So you are correct. Thank you. Is that a long answer? That's perfect. <laughs> <laughs> I'm yes. Uh, <laughs> probably understand it better. Than most people do. <laughs> but thank you. Any other questions? Item 11, which is committee appointments, there are none. Item 12, which is the Town Shift Committee reports. Now, that I guess is mine. Um, only for information, so that you all know that I think you already know Joe with regards to being a member of the sewer committee. For the first time, we had an organizational meeting where our members actually met. And the members picked who they wanted for their chairs and their vice chair and their secretary. As it stated in my report to the, to the board, I was the one who wanted an alternate secretary. They decided, no, they didn't want an alternate secretary. So that was fine. That was fine with me. So there are three committee chairs. Which I just have. There are four on this committee. So it's, somebody at once said to me, well, that's like the fourth person being you know, kind of out there, but it isn't. It's still a committee. Um, and the four meet, and Trustee Benzi sits on the sewer appeals. Your construction board of appeals is Gil. Okay, I'm only got it. Bert Gale. He has these two names for the first. So it's Bert Gale, and Bert is our zoning administrator. He does an excellent job, and he really did a nice job with the first organizational meeting that we had with this group. And they again picked who they wanted for their chairs, their vice chairs, and their secretaries. So that's all in the packet for those who received the packet or who pulled up the packet. So it's only an information piece. So that everybody here on the board understands, and you understand, that this agreement or this organizational meeting took place with these two committees. So if there's any questions, I guess I can't take them because it's not how we work, but that's what it is. Okay, so that was my report on the organizational meetings, the Disorder Board of Appeals and the Construction Board of Appeals. So now we go to item 13, which is unfinished business. This is for introduction and discussion. This is the COVID-19 requirement for patrons. And I think our superintendent has that. I do, thank you. So at your last board meeting, of course, you, um, you discussed having a vaccination requirement for the patrons of the senior center. Um, and I agreed I would try to bring someone here for you. And that was Liz tonight, Reddick from the Mid-Michigan District Health Department. Um, in addition to that, um, Trustee Feelings Bliss had asked if we could acquire information on some local senior centers and what, what they're doing currently for um, mitigation strategies and if, and if they were open. So I've provided that information for you tonight. If I can answer any questions or be of assistance to you in your discussion, I would be pleased to do that. Are there any questions? Okay. My question is the assessment that you had done. This was done on the computer as opposed to on the phone. So we talked to somebody. Mm -hmm. well, so looked at their web pages and yeah, yep. so our assumption is this is all updated information. Correct. A lot of them had had a date as to when it had been updated. Okay. Because I personally would have preferred the phone call to each one to do, but that's why I wanted to make sure that you knew this was an updated piece and this is the updated information that you can get from, because sometimes the computer is a little behind because you have other things to do and those who manage it aren't always on top to get the information. There were dates that were on the computer that okay. said when that, the information had been updated. So it seemed current. 
Okay, cool. That was my only. See you in. Oh, I'm sorry, Jason. That's what I want to see. Go ahead. Um, so thank you for uh, bringing uh, your representative from the Michigan Health Department. I do have to say, I feel like I'm less knowledgeable about how to address things based on what she got shared. I'm uh, frankly disappointed, but uh, it is what it is. Um, I do want to say that I did visit the senior center. I, uh, there was an issue that I saw with masks uh, not being enforced. So I think we can make some improvements there. Um, I did reach out to uh, Brittany, the uh, senior center coordinator, um, and offered information about how uh, she could reach out to DHHS to uh, set up a, a pop-up vax clinic at the senior center. And she was very receptive to that. I know she has a date schedule that coincides with <clears throat> uh, the uh, time for that uh, the, the booster shot. So, I would like to, if we are not going to uh, look into a uh, vaccination policy, um, at least uh, create some incentives for uh, people to get shots um, and take our part serious. We're doing the best that we can to make sure we vaccinate as many people as possible. So is our intention to bring this back as an item for action or is this just the update we're receiving tonight? asking anyone who will answer. <laughs> <laughs> a suggestion. I mean, I, I would like to see um, a, a clear plan. And so, on how we're going to do this. Okay. It doesn't have to be super lengthy, but at least uh, something in writing. Um, I said I prefer to see a vaccination requirement policy, uh, but I don't feel that my, that the board is in a place to go along with that. Um, in the absence of that, again, I, you know, I something concrete in terms of how we're going to meet the needs of our citizens. Okay. I'm a little confused. Then. You want a plan, but you don't want to act on it? Well, you want a clear plan? I want a clear plan. And if we have a plan, we're more likely to act on it. Probably. Gotcha. The health department was just here. Do they have a policy, that, an overall policy that they're recommending? Besides what she said. Personal choice, but of course they push. There's a reason I asked it. Okay. So you can't count on them then to give you an overarching policy. No. Okay. Well, being realistic about that, that puts us in a tough spot. It really does. So I'll be interested to see what you come up with. Do you have thoughts about what you would come up with, or are you looking for more guidance from us? No, I have thoughts. Um, okay. I do think that if we have a, um, a policy where if they're going to come, they sign an agreement that basically states they know they are coming, they are required to wear a mask. Um, it, it may be that we um, lessen the amount of people that can enter the senior center because we are not at this time. Um, there were no limits on attendance, so we may back that number down a little bit. We've had about 55, I think, per day. So we may do that so that there's more distance between the tables and the people at the tables and um, signing an agreement that says if, if I'm here, I, I know I'm required to wear a mask unless I'm eating and drinking and therefore something that we can enforce if Brittany has to speak to someone more than once or twice, you know, whatever that number is, that the, the person can be asked to leave for the day. 
um, possibly if they're not going to adhere to the requirement to wear a mask, um, but also agreeing that if they're sick, they'll stay home, and if they um, if they become COVID positive, that they, they notify us immediately, something like that. I don't, I don't know if that's reaching enough for you to um, support that, but that's my initial thought. In the thoughts that you have with this, have you engaged the seniors themselves to, because in order to, I think, ride herd on them, that kind of term, mm -hmm. as opposed to their own self? Um, I go over there weekly usually okay. and walk around That's and discuss thought. things with them. Okay. Um, I, I know there are a couple of people that um, would prefer not to wear masks and think it's it's done, not done as a group, it's done individually. I, I usually speak to them individually, yes. Okay. Yeah. So as a, as a group to know so that they all are on the same page as to what's happening, would that be part of your plan? I've, I've addressed them during announcements. I don't, I don't know what you're asking me. Okay. Um, it would be like standing up here and saying you've got 50 people out there and you're uh -huh. discussing what would be your thoughts this is what we're running up against, mm -hmm. which is what Jason had said. We need a clear plan. Yeah. Of well, I went out there when we were discussing having a vaccination requirement. I went out there and made an announcement that the right. board would be discussing that, and we needed their feedback. And we, okay. they were encouraged to speak with Judy Gardy. Um, Jason was there that day, um, or to come to the township and speak with me or whoever they were comfortable with. So yes, I I okay. engaged them as a group and individually. Apparently, Judy has a question. <laughs> Actually, Judy, can you wait and hold that for the... I've got a question. Trustee, this will answer your question. In the process of eating, they don't have to wear their mask. That's correct. And they can talk to each other. That's correct. And if they want to get water, they can go up and get water. But they should put their mask on. But they got to put their mask on. But they're talking to each other the, uh -huh. the whole time. So what, what good is wearing a mask except you don't contaminate everybody just your own table maybe yeah um it's possible that they're surrounding themselves i know i know that they have their preferences for who they sit with that maybe they're sitting with people that they're comfortable with who are doing similar things to them um and then we also probably need to take a look at the ventilation in the center yeah to see what what the, the furnaces are relatively new but that's an inquiry i can make to see if there's anything additional we can do out there to to um improve the air circulation get an air mover yeah so but okay. you're correct it happens it, it, it happens at restaurants it, it yeah. happens um anywhere you know any people are not wearing masks yeah so i um i mean i would i i, I like the idea of having contracts mm -hmm. with, with folks and I don't know if having a formalized contract, how effective that would be. Um, I, I think looking at ventilation, I think makes a lot of sense. Um, uh, take a look at what are the barriers to getting the vaccine. I don't I mean, one, removing the barriers if we can. Mm -hmm. and so maybe doing a pop-up clinic, mm -hmm. uh, a vaccination clinic, uh, I think will be helpful. Um, if we provide some sort of incentive for people who are not vaccinated to get vaccinated. I don't know if that's a possibility. Uh, that might have a little bit more of a than you know, a social contract. Yeah. Um, I think I think the problem with that is we, we run uh, up against um, this use of taxpayer dollars and we're doing giveaways. I don't, I don't know what type of giveaways you're looking at, but that would have to be a discussion that I would have with um, Treasurer was to ensure that we're not doing anything incorrectly. Yeah. But um, we, we before the senior center opened, um, Brittany made contact with everyone that they had an emergency contact sheet for and had a conversation with them about whether they needed assistance in obtaining the shot. Um, that still stands, so and it would be the same for the, the booster shot as well. So she would she would be willing to arrange you know, for a vaccine, she'd be willing to arrange for transportation. Um, we, we've made ourselves available to do those things for each of the seniors. Okay, thank you. Yes, 
I don't want to leave Jason out on a limb here. I also would be supportive of a mandate. I think being cautious and careful is the best uh, policy for us. Um, while it's everyone's internal personal decision, accessing the senior center is not. So should that policy make its way to the board, I would certainly be supportive. Uh, I think there may be more support uh, for what Jason's talking about then. Than he thinks. You can't ask them if they've had their shots. And so, how are you going to try to control it? You can't ask people if they've had No, shots. according to her, when she said right here, said you can't ask them. It's not. You don't have, you don't have the right. Myers, no place has the right to ask you if you've had the shots or not. You, you do. That's not correct. Folks can ask. They don't have to answer, but there's nothing protecting people. Just like I can ask well, you, no, did you ever get knee surgery, right? And you don't yeah. have to tell me yes or no. No, I didn't. <laughs> 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 me neither. <laughs> uh, but you're right. You, 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 I guess you've got a right to ask them, but they don't have, they don't have to answer you. Right. Yeah. And so you're not going to get an answer from... I guess I... I'm sorry. Right. I, I guess I would hesitate to bring you a vaccination policy, a mandate policy, when um, this group declined to approve a policy for all employees. Um, you, you approved one for the police department and then stopped short of approving one for employees, and now you're saying you'd like to mandate the senior center have a policy requiring a vaccination. And, and I guess I just, I feel like it's all over the board um, no pun intended, um, of, of whether or not you support vaccination policies requirements or not. So. Yeah, I think we should re revisit that. Some of the board members said that they were unwilling to vote for that while the vaccine was in emergency status, but at least the Pfizer vaccine is no longer in emergency status. It has now been fully approved. So there may be, I don't mean to speak on others' behalf. Again, I am a vote yes for both of those things, as I was I for think, the police. I think I was bringing that to you as the only thing that confuses me when we have this discussion is that you're, you were in support of it here, but then not here, but now you're in support of it here. So I'm just trying to make a, a connection of what what is it that you're willing to do. As a yeah, person. the consistency is important, and I think we should treat our police like we treat our fire people and our staff and our visitors. and. I think that's fair. I, I would like to see uh, I'll revisit the employee vaccination policy. I've learned that only 70% of the fire department is vaccinated. And in as much as you know, their rule uh, has them in close contact, potentially in close contact with vulnerable populations, I think it's important for us to uh, take that into consideration. The other thing I want to say is that, um, you know, the purpose of, of thinking about vaccination requirements for our senior center is to protect our seniors. Mm -hmm. uh, without one, I, I, I believe we're doing a disservice uh, uh, to those who either can't get vaccinated or who are vaccinated but still afraid of uh, the Delta variant. And so, you know, when we're, we're not serving all of our uh, seniors, uh, and uh, uh, we're purposely, uh, not purposely, but incidentally uh, not serving those who have chosen to protect themselves. I, I feel that that is uh, an injustice. So part of your mandate, okay. part of the mandate, just from understanding this, that you're looking at would be if someone physically can't do it, in other words, because the doctor orders you don't do this because it'll compromise whatever system problems that you may have. You don't allow them in? No. Okay. So, what? So, uh, so just take MSU or U of M or you know, any number of organizations that do have a vaccination requirement. The young people. They have exemptions. And so there's a right. medical exemption right. and then there's a religious exemption. Um, and so the idea is that uh, individuals uh, uh, either are vaccinated or they're exempted from vaccination, uh, but those who do not 
who choose not to get vaccinated based on personal choice uh, are the ones that would be excluded. Okay, Trustee Ryan brought up a point that the vaccine, some of them, well, actually just one right now, has been no longer on probation, if you will. It has been approved for use. The rest of them are going to follow. So that's a game changer. We're not asking somebody to do something that isn't a, is an experiment anymore. As it was first presented to us, we would be asking somebody to take something that was actually an experiment at that time because it hadn't been approved. But as these vaccines get full approval, it's a game changer. So I, I would revisit this at a later point in time because things are changing. And we should revisit this at a later point. As long as it's understood, Pfizer stays with Pfizer, Moderna stays with Moderna, J&J stays with J&J. You don't uh, mix them. Uh, that's what the health people are telling us. You don't mix them. Yeah, I, 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 I'm not going to take that position. I'm just going to let this run its course. They're no longer experimental. The Pfizer is no longer. Pfizer is no longer. That's correct. The rest of them will be following suit. Okay. Yeah. But they haven't yet. Mm -hmm. But in the future, when we have this discussion, okay. it's a game changer in our original discussions when things were experimental. This 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 won't be part of it. It won't be an experimental medicine anymore. It will be an improved medicine. When they prove it, that's correct. That's yes. correct. Yeah. Nope. If I remember correctly, the, the main objection to employees was the, uh, the lack of FDA approval. Right. Yeah. 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 All right. Judy has been jumping a bit back there to say something with this issue. Would you like to have her wait until the next public comment, or can there be an interaction? I don't think we can pick and choose when we engage the audience. It's a two-thirds vote, but that's okay. Do you want to wait for the second? No, I appreciate that. Thank you, Judy. Okay, is there any other issues? Yeah, I got one. Yes. I talked with the fire department, and the last that was less than a month ago, and half of our fire department, they didn't think would get the shots. Now, we're asking us to lose half of our fire department by making them get shots. Uh, I think we should check with Dave, make sure, have him check him again, but uh, you're, right now you're chewing off your foot despite yourself. I know I'd, I recommend they get them, but I can't recommend that, uh, I, I can't make you get them. I also support personal choice, but we should discuss this later, okay, and see what the options are in an ever-changing environment that we're in. Well, I think with Liz here, she was getting, she was telling us what to do, what the options are at this point. So, would it be okay to have her come back to change? No. No? Okay. She's going to have the same statement that she had this time. I have no value of what she said. So you don't think the two weeks have changed? No. No. Okay. All right, then. We can't, as you say, not to use them. That's that long. We're looking at the health department as not a resource for superintendent to make a recommendation. She basically said she wasn't a resource for that. No, that's, that's what I mean. I, I think I understand what the board would look now. Okay. The, the, the board members that have spoken up, I absolutely I understand what they are making. Good, because then you'll, then in two weeks we'll have a recommendation. Is that correct? Okay. All right. Okay, so now we'll go on to capital B under 13, which is items for action. 
and I think Superintendent Hildebrandt, you're up with the station. Thank you. Um, as you'll recall at the last meeting, uh, Brad Gersky, the Director of Operations of our Southern Clinton County Municipal Utility Authority, visited with us and informed us about Station 201, which is the final station responsible for transmitting all of our flows of waste. Um, and it, he, he hit on why it's crucial that it be at its full capacity and operate at its full capacity. Uh, currently, it's operating at about 1,100 to 1,200 gallons um, uh, per million um, on the best days, and, and that's probably being um, positive about it. Um, and the pumps, therefore, would have to work harder than they should. He recommended to us that the most cost-effective uh, solution would be to upgrade to a single pump. He even recommended that we use, um, I hope I don't say this correct, incorrectly, but the Du Bois Cooper Homo Pump at a cost of approximately $35,000. In addition, he asked us to upgrade the electrical components to service the larger pump that is required, which was approximately $12,000. The total cost of the project would then be approximately $78,000 with contingencies. I'm asking for you to act on this tonight. Um, I have um, put the other project that you heard about on hold for the time being, as I'm working with Prime and Newhoff to develop a master plan for our sewer infrastructure. And we are also working on a rate study for our sewer um, infrastructure and the use of that and the money that brings in. Um, and I think we can address the other needs of the sewer system at a later date when those two reports are complete. In this uh, action, is this fundamentally making a budget amendment as well, or will we have to amend the budget later but approve the expenditure now? Um, I believe that we have the funds in our budget at this time. Oh, it's already budgeted in there. Yeah. It's, the, the funds are in the, um, I assume mm -hmm. the, the, our capital, I believe it's capital improvement. Um, so what does... Why do we need to approve the expenditure if it's already in the budget? It wasn't budgeted specifically for this. Got it. Thank you. So my question is, it's coming out of the sewer budget. Yes, Thank right. you. Thank 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 you. Uh, you know, it took a little process to get through, and as we get numbers, we're seeing holds on these numbers uh, around 15 days, unfortunately, for these vendors. Um, I've talked with these vendors we've talked with recently. The hardest thing we're having trouble with right now is a local vendor to help us get the installation complete. Um, we've used Gunthorpe on your guys' projects in the past, which is a local vendor that's uh, inside the township. Um, they still seem willing. They've just been busy and backed up. but. Uh, that's what the contingency was for, was ultimately to cover. It's a supply chain. Thing. It's a supply chain, absolutely, sir. Is there any contingency with Prime and With engineering? Contingency with Prime and Yeah, with engineering costs. So, like that. Joe, on this piece here, um, Prime and Newhoff is not necessarily involved. They, okay. they, had the, they looked at it to say, yes, in theory, that works and that will. Um, create a, a short-term fix. Uh, this is not the overall long-term fix for that, uh, but this will get us through the future, in the foreseeable future. Um, the long-term fix that Prime New Off will be in, involved in more directly, but no, they have nothing to really to do with this other than uh, giving their blessing. Plan that I, yep. I agree. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm reading. All three of us. <laughs> <laughs> You're watching. I'm reading. <laughs> Trust me, yes. Would you describe this as a critical piece that we need to do right now? This is critical. Um, the, the issue being that that station is uh, nearing the 12, 13 year mark. Um, it's been overworked from day one. Um, so we'll have to look at replacing those pumps in the future 
uh, very near future. This will give us a, a one-up where we can take one pump out, get it rebuilt, have it as a backup, which then buys us time for the rest of it and, and, and kind of extends our life expectancy a little more, but yet gets us the flow we need in the short term. That's helpful. Thank you. The the way Cooper, uh, they were looking at, they were still finalizing the numbers on that, uh, but it's going to be 87 to 90. And typically, the, the issue with that again is supply chain. Um, it fits the, the chart very well, but. Again, they're having some supply issues, so if they can they can trim things different ways on the impeller, they can change the horsepower, but that's the, they're, they were comfortable in their number enough to give it at a, at a three month uh, extension or guarantee. So they will guarantee that? That one, that piece they will. The other pieces that we're involved in, that's where the contingency comes in, the electrical components, um, but they were the only ones that were firm on a, short, a longer window. How long is this pump going to last? You say in the near the future. That's uh, like asking for the winning, winning lotto. Number. That? Okay, but this other pump lasted, uh, what, 20 years? Well, yeah, the, the pump, these pumps are still, the pumps that we're replacing are still operational. They were operating today. Um, but I mean, it, how quick are we going to have to go into, we're spending 78000 Yep. Uh, we could use that maybe to, in, help pay for the the other one that they're going to put in later on yep so uh, with that being said the particular pumps you have in there now you pay more than the thirty eight thousand dollars 12 years ago for so this is a good buy granted it's a different manufacturer it's a manufacturer that's trying to get into the states they're a european company um, we've talked with operators that have them they're very comfortable and have good luck great warranty a great vendor that backs them up um, so we're comfortable making that recommendation knowing that it's uh, a more cost-effective solution than even replacing the existing pump. To say how long it's going to last, they have a five-year warranty just like most anything else um, in the pumping world. Uh, I've, in my 20 years of experience, I've seen them last anywhere from a year to 35 years. Um, it, there's no really no rhyme and reason sometimes to, to mechanical failures, um, but I would be comfortable saying you're going to get this 10 to 15 year life expectancy out of this. Depending on use. I mean, if we start getting a lot more 100 year, 500 year events, yeah. it's going to use a lot more and it's going to wear out quicker. Okay, so any more questions? I would move approval to uh, approve the expenditure not to exceed $78,000 for the pump upgrade project at lift station 201 Slate Road. Yeah, it's, yes, it did. Yep, it was built in, yep. Of course I included that. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Brett. Yep. All right. Mr. Rosecrans? Yes. Mr. Joseph Bless? Yes. Mr. Ben C? Yes. Mr. Wiss Yes. Ms. Howell? Yes. Ms. Mother Challenger? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so now we will move. That one is unanimous. Dealing with the station 201. Now, the second, which would be small b, a simple way. Second reading and adoption of ordinance 3173. I move to uh, approve the second reading and adoption of ordinance 3173. Second. Mr. Yes. Mr. Amarigi? Yes. Mr. Benzi? Yes. Mr. Wiswasser? Yes. Ms. Howe? Yes. Ms. Butler-Challenge, yes. Mr. Rosecrans? Yes. Thank you. Okay, see the budget amendments. Under items for action, B, <coughs> Budget Amendment, Office Relocations, Renovation, and Furniture. Mm -hmm. um, this is pretty straightforward. Um, I outlined here the offices that would be impacted. 
Um, the prior to um, the office being redone for Brenda, our clerk, it had been I think at least 30 years since that office had been redone, and I'm trying to um, just make sure our offices are clean and professional. So I am asking for 11,500 in furniture and $3,000 in um, renovations um, in order to upgrade um, four offices. I have a question, but some of the motion is I don't know if you have a question. Uh, Brenda gave us a tour, Al and I a tour of the offices back there. Mm -hmm. Things are looking really sharp and, and nice, so nice job on that. And with that, I would make the motion to approve the recommendations presented by the superintendent for budget amendments, 11500 and $3,000 in the appropriate line items as outlined. Oh. Okay. What you're asking for, is that 2021 budget or 20? Budget. I'm amending 2021's budget okay. for the repairing of the office in 2020. In other words, Steve's office would have been 2020, mine would have been in 2020. No, I'm asking it for work to be completed after you approve. This has not been spent. Okay. I'm asking for work to be done after this amendment is approved, if you choose to so approve it. So he's going to relocate and get new furniture for the treasurer. And superintendent's going to relocate renovations and furniture. Correct. Okay. Where's he relocating to? I'd, I'd, re relocating I'd, re to? I'd prefer to refer to it as a desk versus furniture. He has not requested a lazy boy. <laughs> <laughs> but I'll, I'll give you a little background. That person okay. has been there since 1996. When I was there in 1996, and, and it got bought from the from the deceased treasurer that was there before I. Um, and it never changed during the last. I was gone for eight years. I'm back for five, so it's been there for a while. Oh well, no, I don't get. But when it says relocation in furniture, so my question is, you're relocating? The treasurer and the clerk are going to be as they should be right next to each other because they, they interact every day um, down here. The treasurer will be in the assessing office because you've moved okay. the assessing mm -hmm. office to the back. Yep. Um, and, and then the deputy superintendent, I'm assuming, will go into... I have no idea what that is. The only thing I do is do the treasure thing. <laughs> you you well, better log me along. That's not really true. But, you know. <laughs> well, I'll take it for what you say. It is. So, um, what you're doing is then moving the treasure. To the vacant, That's mm -hmm. which which is a nice that is really nice. You like that, and then that becomes vacant. Yes, and I will move in there. Okay, and then what happens to the one in the center? No, the office. deputy superintendent will take that office. Okay. That's what I because I wasn't sure who was going. Yeah, if you think about it, the treasurer and the clerk interact with the front staff more than anybody else. Oh, no, and, that, and, that, that's the, and the windows were there so you can see what's going on if there's an issue. It just, it, when it said relocate, we, we, I'm looking at the echoing. We, we had a clerk here for 39 years, God bless her. She was a wonderful asset, um, and, and um, she wanted the assessor next to her and, and because that's the way it was for 39 years. Sure. And, and that, that's kind of how it's, this has came about, I guess, you could say. No, I don't. Ben and I have agreed not to hurry each other and throw things at each other. So, we don't have to be too deal with it. Okay. Okay. I, I personally am looking forward to it. I have to be here as I start back in the back. I always felt like people say, I need to move everybody. Well, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. 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 Trustee Yeah, we're just trying to approve the retrofit of four offices and where the pieces end up. That, that depends on where the people are looking here, what the pieces stand up. I wish I agree with you with that, but no, I want to know what the 11,000 is going for and the 3,000 is going for. So it's making the sense. Renovation of it's, four it's offices. making sense as to where they're going to be and what they're going to do. So you do your thing, I'll have to do mine. <laughs> so that, that works. All right, All right. Yep. Ready. Mr. Almarigi? Yes. Mr. Benzie? Yes. Mr. Wiswasser? Yes. Ms. Howe? 
Rosecrans? Yes. Mr. Funes Bliss? Yes. Thank you. Oh, you're going to forget me there for a second. <laughs> <laughs> To talk about the superintendent's contract. Talking about superintendent's contract and the abandonment. There'll be two issues. So you want to go to committee of the whole for this? For both of them. If you want to take them, we need to take them one at a time. Yes. But it's open up for the public to be able to have a discussion. I'm just clarifying. You want to go to committee of the whole for the superintendent's contract? And for the abandonment, yes. For A and B. If I can't do that, then I would save it for B. Can you? Just explain why you want to go to committee of the whole for the superintendent's contract. Because I think it's important that you have a dis are you not going to have a discussion on it? If you're not going to have a discussion on it. My assumption, the way I'm ASSU and me, is that this had not been discussed and it needed to be discussed. And it was more important to bring in the public and with us. The, I asked for this right. to be on the agenda and I don't I don't think it's a public okay. issue. Then the public has no say in it. Okay, that's fine. Right, right. I don't know. Go ahead and ask a question. <laughs> <laughs> Does that say something? As soon as we finish, are you finished? Wait. If Ryan's finished, then... Well, legally, legally the only way you can take and bring a, a, a person's contract out here, if it's the, no. if it's the police chief, the fire chief, the superintendent's contract, or whoever else has one here, to a public meeting, when we talk about that public meeting, is with the consent of the person that you're dealing with, the right. police chief, the fire chief, and the superintendent. So you really couldn't do that, this board couldn't do that, unless the superintendent agrees to, agree to do that. That's and the legal that's, that's the legal that's, that, 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 that's, the first, that's okay. the only I want to say. Okay. I want to make sure you understood, understood, that. understood that completely. This board can't so vote on that. And, and that that's, that's the exact truth of that. That's up to, to the superintendent to request that. If she, wanted, if she wanted to request that to go into closed session, she has every right to do sure. that. And the board has every right to go into closed session yeah. to discuss this. Yes. All right. So because it's on the agenda, that shouldn't be on the agenda. That would, because it's saying that's our superintendent employment agreement. I consented for it to be on the agenda. That's what I thought. But that's the way to do that. So is there any discussion? Um, if, you, if you don't want to, that's fine. I would, do, I would do the committee as a whole for the abandonment of Chair Street, because I think that's important no problem with that one. enough for a discussion. So if you want to have any items for discussion, so do you have any? I'm sorry, Brian. Go ahead. I'm sorry. I'm really confused. I, I asked for this to be on the agenda. Is it okay for me to present it now? I don't know. It doesn't say you. If, are you the presenter? I am. Okay. Then present it. Okay. Okay. It doesn't say. I have a question for you. Can I? Yeah. One quick one. Do you want this discussed or do you want to go into a private session? I'm fine with it being discussed. Okay. Yeah, fine. Go ahead. Thank you. Uh, it has become clear over the last couple of months, but certainly over the last week, that the relationship between the supervisor and the superintendent has soured, if exists at all. There is clearly not communication between the two. Uh, and when there is, it's, um, it's harsh. Uh, I'm invested in keeping Karen with us as long as she's willing to be here and, and perform, and I think she is performing. So I would propose, and I have copies of these motions uh, for you all to see, uh, since it's a bit complex, that we would alter the superintendent's contract uh, with her permission, obviously, as a contract she'd have to sign off, and replace where it calls for supervision by the township supervisor and change that to township clerk. So if I have counted correctly, that's one, two, three, four, five different places six. where we would, six? One, two, three, four, five, no, just five. Yeah, two down here. 
to, oh, yes, I'm sorry, six total words, yes. Oh, five, yeah, I'm sorry. five clauses, you're right. Uh, where we would be replacing the supervisor with the clerk. That's uh, under vacation time, under training time, uh, termination by uh, the superintendent, uh, approval of hours, uh, and supervision on a day to day basis. Uh, I know this is under items for discussion and introduction. We can wait two weeks and take action, or if the board is interested, I would be interested in making that motion uh, tonight. The second piece about that is uh, a process for the evaluation. Uh, the superintendent's contract also calls for an annual evaluation every October. It's time for us to plan that out. I think in order to protect the superintendent and make sure that all of the board gets to weigh in on that uh, evaluation, it, it makes sense to form a small ad hoc committee to come up with the factors upon which the superintendent would be evaluated, which is the language from her, her contract as well. Uh, and then build a tool for us to use, whether that's a survey or, or whatever it might be, so that we all can each weigh in on the situation uh, to be provided to the superintendent. So those are the two proposals that I am interested in making. Again, I could wait two weeks, uh, but if the board would entertain it, I would like to move on this tonight. I would not like to move on this tonight. We tried that. And we couldn't find any information on it. Uh, when it is an item for action, it um, was an introduction. It's not, and this is new business, introduction and discussion. So we can discuss your changes, but moving on tonight. We've done it twice already. Have. Not we I have, have, we have. <laughs> Taylor, Taylor, Taylor. If I may. Well, well, as as I previously discussed with you before, Madam Supervisor, um, there is nothing in Robert's rules that That's states right. that you cannot take up an agenda item and that you have to wait two weeks after it is introduced. The only instances that you do have to do that or when you are voting on a first reading of an ordinance is then you need to come back uh, for a second time for a second reading and adoption. Um, our agenda, the way that it's outlined with uh, introduction and discussion as well as items for action is simply uh, a guideline for us to operate under. Um, it is not set in stone. Any agenda item can be taken up for action at any time. Okay. Thank you. We did have that discussion because it was something that I was a little confused about from the simple reason that says when it's an introduction and discussion, that's what you do. You introduce it, you discuss it, then you bring it back. Taylor and I had the discussion and she tried to say, which you have said in one of your pieces that the agenda is not, how did you put that? The agenda, the agenda is not a, not a playbook, it's not a term you use. It was a term that meant the agenda is not solid. We adopt it, we follow it, but it can be massaged, for lack of a better term, during the process, which is what you're asking to do. You're saying if you have an introduction and discussion, you want to move it to an item for action that night. There is nothing in Robert Poole's that says that they are silent on it. And the reason they're silent on it is because you do accept an agenda like it is. You don't accept an agenda to say, I want to change it in midstream. Go ahead. Um, when you vote to accept your agenda, you're voting on the individual agenda items that you're going to take up. You're not approving that you're going to only discuss the agenda item or that you are going to take action on the item. Um, it's similar to as if we do have an item that is listed for items for action, you can choose to not act on that item. You do not have to take action. And I'm going to respectfully disagree okay. with the fact that, no, you and I had that discussion, and that's how we came out. Thank goodness we could still talk to each other. <clears throat> but I do disagree with that strongly. And I do disagree with it because it is silent on the issue of being able to change your agenda in midstream. And that's really what you're looking to do. I greatly appreciate what you're doing. I obviously don't agree with what you're doing, but that's okay. I'm only one vote, you know, for you, but it's okay. I have no problem with it. I do have a problem with changing it from introduction and discussion to an item for action and not moving it under item for action. 
Yes, yeah, you've been very clear. That's first time. But that's, that is how that kind of feels to me. So it's up to the board, obviously, as you know, as we, well, repeatedly, that this is what you want to do. I do not favor, and I do think you're in error by doing it. When it says item for introduction and discussion, that's exactly what it means. It doesn't mean an item fraction. And I appreciate being able to have it. I do think I would vote against it. So, is there a motion? I just well, put one out, correct? No. Okay. I can. I was looking for the whim of the board. <laughs> I would second that motion. And the motion is going to go first. Correct. So, and it does help. I'm just guessing. Yes. Oh, I'll raise my voice. I, yeah, I know. I have an issue with this. I, I think this makes a lot of sense. Of course it does. It ensures a fair review process. Uh, I think that the clerk is more often in the building. Uh, so these are all kind of just minor uh, edits uh, to uh, uh, improve the process. Uh, I like the idea that there's a subcommittee that would develop uh, a process that would be put forward for uh, a vote uh, and approval. So, I don't see any practical reason why we need to wait on a vote uh, for this. Uh, I don't know if any new information is going to come up. So, okay. on that basis, I would second the motion. Well, first, what is your motion? So my first motion would be to amend the superintendent's contract dated October 7, 2019 and expiring October 7, 2022 in the ways listed. Uh, in front of you. I'm happy to read it, but I don't want to speak down to anyone if that's not necessary. Support. Okay. Do I do a roll call on that or do I do it together? No. Do a roll call at a time. Okay. Mr. Wiswasser? Yes. Ms. Howell? No. Ms. Bautlichiano, yes. Mr. Rosecrans? Yes. Mr. Dionis Bless? Yes. Mr. Almarigi? Yes. Mr. Benzie? Yes. My second motion would be to create an ad hoc superintendent evaluation board committee comprised of Treasurer Steve Wiswasser, Trustee Joe Benzie, and Trustee Jason Almarigi to design a process and evaluation factors to evaluate Superintendent Hildebrandt. The committee will seek feedback on the superintendent's performance from each board member through their design process and the committee will expire on December 31st, 2021. I'll second that. Mr. Bensey? Yes. Mr. Wiswasser? Yes. Ms. Howe? No. Ms. Butler Chandler, yes. Mr. Rosecrans? Yes. Mr. Felix West? Yes. Mr. Emily? Yes. yes. Mr. Bensey? Yes. Mr. Bensey? Yes. Mr. Bensey? Yes. Mary, Marie. Oh, that's right. I uh, for this uh, Cherry Street. I move we go to a meeting in the hall. Thank you. I think it's taking over now. Yes, we do. Yes. You can second it. I'd be more than happy to second it. Huh? I'd be more than happy to second it. Oh, you can but second it. I'm not it. sure that it's chair, but that's okay. I'll second it. <clears throat> so now we're at committee for whole. You understand what that is? The vote, go ahead. Two thirds vote. You have to have two thirds vote. So it's second. Mr. Betsy? Yes. Mr. Wiswasser? No. Ms. Howell? Yes. Ms. Mr. Butler Chandler, no. Mr. Rosecrans? Yes. Mr. Dewins Bliss? No. Mr. Almarigi? No. Okay, motion fails. So we're not going to be a committee as a whole. 
So any discussion that needs to be done can be done with public comment. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I prepared a memo, and I know that quite a few of the residents were able to pick that up and pull that up online. Um, I'll try to be brief in my synopsis of this. Um, Supervisor Powell, back in June of 2021, contacted the Clinton County Road Commission um, and embarked on um, the process of um, abandoning the public right-of-way of Cary Street between Clinton and Main Street. Um, which required the consent on, in, of the four adjacent property owners and um, included some additional freeholders, which were interested parties that I learned. So, um, once I was made aware of the inquiry, because I had not been through this process before, I inquired to Mark Trotter, who works at the Clinton County Road Commission, whether or not our board would have any input into this process. And because Cherry Street did not dead end um, into a lake or with water access, he indicated at that time that the, the township would not have any family abandonment. Um, fast forwarding to um, the, the signatures of the um, property owners and the freeholders were obtained and that was relayed, um, the completed um, package was relayed to um, Mark Trotter at the Clinton County Road Commission. I included a copy um, that Mrs. Howe had um, supplied to me. Um, and then on August 19th, they accepted the Cherry Street abandonment petition and passed a resolution to abandon portion of right away for Cherry Street, uh, and they have parentheses, Road and Bath Charter Township. Um, at that time, um, our, right about that same time, our assessor had identified a concern that if this were to happen, that um, action would be needed to take in, be taken in circuit court as the land was part of a plat and the, um, the um, property description could not be modified by us nor could we change the property description um, change or divide I should say excuse me because we were looking to divide it um, when I emailed um, the Clinton County Road Commission, I received a, a response from their legal counsel for clarification, and I am going to just read the brief, I think it's two sentences. Because the street isn't a plat, the abandonment only got rid of the public's right to use the street. It remains on the plat as a private street until, until such time as a circuit court enters an order amending the plat under the Land Division Act. In that proceeding, the court would determine how to allocate the former street among the owners in the plat. I received an update from our legal counsel today regarding the issue. Um, Chris Patterson, um, who generally works on issues for us in conjunction with Ross Fowler, who works with our assessor on property issues, are working with the Clinton County Road Commission's counsel this week to see what options are available to the parties that are involved, which includes the township and the adjacent property owners. So at this time, I do not have anything of, of substance to offer you except that we are um, researching and we are discussing this to see what options that the township has as well as the property owners have. Any questions? Well, we got... I'm sorry. We got two weeks to uh, for this to come back, so uh, we'll be able to at that time have our attorney's opinion and uh, how we can handle it the best. I make a motion to uh, bring this back in a couple of weeks when we have our legal opinions from all of the attorneys involved in this situation. And I think that probably makes sense because like I called this morning with reference from the Clinton County, the CCRC, the commission group, and Doug had said that he will be checking with their attorney Absolutely. to see, which we, we all knew that that's what was going to be done because they needed to do it. They did pass a resolution, however, and that resolution claims that the four property owners, and I think all four of them are here, um, Signed the petition and agreed that yes, they wanted it to be divided. What they didn't say and what was wrong, if there is a wrong, the error that was in their resolution, which was kind of an interesting piece, stated that it needs to go 
they can only, they can't, they can't, they don't have the authority to give it to the property owners. Only Bath Township can do that. So, if my understanding, and Karen, jump in there, my understanding is that they end up abandoning the property. They call it a paper land because it's been there for so long they've never done anything with it. And once they abandon that, then it becomes the township that they'll do it. Now, they're supposed to meet Thursday to fix the resolution to state that it will be abandoned for their use of a road and the property rights. Then it, it would then come back to Bath Township. Now, part of what they're saying, and you can have that discussion, I'm sure comments too will come up, with the fact that there are two ways to do it. One is circuit court, and one is to just abandon, Bath Township abandons and gives it to their property. The resolution, I think you're referring to the resolution. on the tax roll, which has never been on tax roll. This piece that's there has always been a Clinton County arbitrage that's kind of set there. Not, yes, that they have always had it there and have never done anything with it. Now, we want to put it, we being the four, which I've been interacting with and talking with them, want to see it on the tax roll. And that's the question. He also, Doug also brought up the question of who's going to pay for it, whether the property owners pay for circuit court or whether Bath Township pays for circuit court. That's something that their attorney has to know, and I'm assuming that's what Chris is looking at, yes. our township attorney. So it's kind of waiting, and you're right, it's just waiting until we hear from both of them as to what's going on. But as the interest of the property owners, it should be clearly understood that all four of them are in favor of getting it taken care of and dividing it so that they end up putting it on a tax roll for themselves. And that's something they can obviously, I don't know if I'm putting words in your mouth or not, guys. <laughs> so, you can't speak, so go ahead. I'd like to second Joe's motion. Which was? That we wait. Motion to bring this back in a couple of weeks. In two well, weeks. in a couple of weeks they have it. I would agree well, that. If we're they don't, we're going to. We'll bring it back when they, when they's ready. Okay. So there's a second, so we need a vote. Mr. Wismusser? Yes. Ms. Howe? Just make sure I'm clarifying it. I understand that what we're working at is this coming back once the attorneys, both attorneys, will make a decision, suppose the attorneys are in opposition, then what happens? Well, wait till we, wait till we have it. That's what I'm, that's what I, <laughs> I'm missing no. Ms. Butler Challenger, yes. Mr. Rosecrans? Yes. Mr. Kim's Bliss? Yes. Mr. Almarigi? Yes. Mr. Bensey? Yes. There's a vacancy currently on the school board of commissioners. Um, if you are so inclined tonight, um, either to, I'm sorry, is this not the discussion? I'm sorry, um, to discuss um, filling that vacancy um, that would um, be appointed to fill the remainder of the term, which expires December 31st, 2023. I think I've shared with most of the board my uh, interest and willingness to serve if you should so have me. Also happy to support other folks who may be interested. Is your done? That's my question. <laughs> <laughs> 
I, I appreciate the asking of you to ask me that question. Um, I will always, no, I don't need to remind you, I'm running many minutes. As, as the treasurer of the township, which I will remain, um, I will be available, as I've told the superintendent and the various other board members we've asked, um, for support or, or anything they would need in the way of information about um, Southern Cook County Municipal Utility Authority and our involvement and our, my knowledge of it. Um, it's, I, I'm, I'm not as young as I used to be. I have other ambitions, um, and I'm uh, I'm getting my, myself in a position where I can, can make some choices in, in, uh, in the coming years. And, and uh, I'm a farmer. I farm an extreme amount of land. Um, my wife and I are both. Uh, um, we're getting older. <laughs> <laughs> this place is a lot of work, <laughs> and, and, that, and that's what this is about. I, I'm not. I, my email did not um, necessarily um, praise some of our direction. I think that we have a lot of work to do with our sewer. It's got to start with the planning commission. It's got to start with our marketing of our township and getting some things straight around, and so that we get back into the developers' um, eye. So that we can continue to take and, and do these things, you're down to 300 RVUs. What that means is you're down to you can build 300 houses in this township, put on the sewer, and then you're done. And that's a big problem. And, and that needs to be fixed. We all know that. And, and a little bit um, transparent about that. So, so that's that's where we're at. I'm going to be here. I'm going to be here for the. The other stuff, I'm actually going to be up front here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, going here. I'm going to be involved in the tax thing very explicitly. I love the tax world, I love the treasure world, and uh, like I said, I'm, I'm looking for the dollar. Yes? Did you put your resignation in the school? I don't have to. Oh, okay. I just don't show up? Yes, uh, okay. I, I, you have, you're a member of the. The way, the way the, the my understanding the way the charter is written, I was over there for many years. That's my 13 years. <laughs> that's what I was here before. But you're you're a member of, of the township. That you're the township's representative. That if you vote for Ryan tonight, you will be the township's representative along with Karen. Um, and and of the current, currently, that that's the way that works. If the, if the, with the plant rebuilding and restructuring and more capacity is gained as a possibility, there'll be a third one. That township that will be on the board of um, when you rebuild the plant. Um, uh, the, 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 a lot of people don't realize this, but the last time that plant was rebuilt, we, we know that. <laughs> the last time that place was there, I, I, I got, I was there, I was the chairman of it, I, I was involved in that, up to my eyeballs, and there's a lot of work for that. And then uh, um, um, there's a lot to do, and there's a lot of responsibility. This township has a big asset in that over there, along with the West city and water down township it's, it's a big it's a big undertaking and, and i think it's time for some new new eyes to look at it and if they want some old information they got money <laughs> <laughs> what this is is items for introduction and discussion because usually the supervisor appoints and that's something i appreciate finally knowing that this because when i got the email i thought well i'm gonna wait and see because sometimes change minds and so this one obviously you didn't change minds so something that was important enough to you that you stuck with it so that means there's no opening in that committee okay so that's that information that's appreciated thank you thank you i appreciate you letting us let me thank, know. thank the board for thank you the board for the, the respect you give me i totally okay. appreciate that so in two weeks we have an appointment what? Thing that was coming up with it because I, I we had our first in-house meeting 
after being gone for there for I don't know how many years. We had, we had, we had several Zoom meetings I was a part of since February, I think. We knew a plan to be a supervisor. But we had one, one meeting, and I go over there for the one meeting, and, and, and it took a lot to walk up that sidewalk. I, she knows the story, I told her. <laughs> and, 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 you know, and I get there, and I find out that, you know, when I left there, we were just finishing up the, the, the plant expansion project in 2000. 2008, but when I when I get there in July, I find out that we've already we're rebuilding the plant now. And, and, and it's, it's a lot. I think you need to have somebody that's going to be here for a long time, that's going to be involved in this place and whatnot. And, and uh, I'm not maybe as old as some people at this table, and I'm not picking on anybody. What I have for responsibility is my wife and I are thinking about what our future is. I'm thinking about my future and I have some other things in mind, and that's what this is all about. All right, so I have an appointment that I need to have done in two weeks. Because it says appointment to this, for this committee. So I appreciate finding that out and letting me know. So you will be submitting, I will be submitting. So you will have a chance to elect and operate at that time with your input. So our next one would be Diaz and David, the 2022 superintendent budget recommendation. Thank you. Is that, why is that under items for action? It's okay, new you're business. Just introducing, you're just introducing it? Yes. Okay. This is like a three month process. So. I understand that. Okay. What, what, I, what action were you looking for? I'm looking for you to vote on your budget recommendations, but that's okay. This is the beginning of the three-month process. Yeah, I'm, I'm hoping this will be the beginning. Yes. Well, it can't be any quicker. Then why are you looking for action to approve the budget? Because when I'm looking at the, why are we doing recommendations when we have a budget meeting? I don't. Well, what you got to do is you got to start picking days that we have our okay. meetings. So we're going to be picking days, not recommendations. That I think we should turn it over to Karen to introduce the item. Okay. That's well. It doesn't says Friday introduction. Recommendations released on Friday, September third. I think we know it's Karen who's introducing it. Like to do this some other way? <laughs> it doesn't say that you're introducing it. That's why I looked at it and thought it was a little. Who do you want to introduce it? Okay, go ahead. Okay, so uh, I will look, defer to you as to how you would like to go through this. In the past, other boards have gone page by page, other boards have set up um, work sessions um, that we post prior to, um, the, let's say, the next board meeting. Um, other boards still have uh, done special meetings in between meetings. So um, I'm happy to do anything that this board comes to the conclusion that they would like to do. Um, but I can introduce this by saying that um, there is a lot here to digest. One of the main issues that I am seeing, and it will be a big discussion for this group, uh, will be the police and fire um, millage. Um, the, the expenses that are being proposed here in the staffing lines are now at an amount that are, that, that are almost um, at the, the amount of the millage that we are bringing in. Um, the police chief has requested um, one officer to replace an officer that will be retiring midway through the year next year. In addition to that, he's asking for one additional officer. The fire department is looking at requesting two full-time um, employees that would respond. It's my understanding that recently um, the, the fire chief responded to a fire, a structure fire, and there were five um, people that responded with him. Um, so our numbers, as far as a volunteer pay on call department, have grown over the years. Um, I don't think that when I have these discussions with the, the fire chief um, that people have the same sense of volunteerism for their community that they used to have. Um, I can't speak to that, but I know that his numbers are down and he does not have the people that he used to have that respond to both EMS calls and to fires. So those, that was one of the biggest items um, that you'll see here. 
In addition to that, we are on schedule to replace a police cruiser, the last 2015 police cruiser that we have currently um, is due to be replaced, and that is included here in this budget. Overall recommendations include a 3% increase for all staff members. Because health benefit information does not come in until approximately October, I have used a 10% recommendation from our provider to calculate budget, um, to calculate budget numbers for benefits. So, so that is high. Last year I did the same thing and I was given a 5% cut. So it's very possible. I don't know in this, this world right now what those benefit numbers will look like, but it's possible it could be anywhere from 10%, it could be more, it could be less, it could be a cut like we experienced last year. Um, as you're aware, the superintendent's department obviously um, is larger than it had been in the past and this reflects the decisions made by the board for a front office position that is being staffed currently and the deputy superintendent position, but it also eliminates the administrative services department and thereby the spending in that department has been transferred to the superintendent's department. So the 2022 election cycle um, will be much like the 2017 election cycle that we went through. Um, the police and fire millage will be voted on next year as well as a couple of township positions. So we've tried to estimate that um, those amounts at that level back for 2017. Um, in addition to the clerk has been looking at an absent voter um, uh, ballot board, I don't know if I'm saying county that correctly, county board, um, because we have approximately 3,600 absentee ballots that are now received um, that's actually almost as much as a precinct in this township. So we're looking at having a board that counts those and that would do that all day long basically with the same equipment. In the assessing department, there are salary increases there for the assessor and her staff, um, much lower than the requested, um, but are still increases nonetheless. Um, the treasurer's department includes an increase in contractual and professional services. And this is because our accountants, um, we've asked to do um, some, some work with our accountants on um, the uniform chart of accounts will be changing uh, in the coming year. And there are things that they will consult us on that will of course cost money um, to complete those projects and to do those in the best interest of the township and in, in, in the best interest of the taxpayers. Um, and we've talked to them about some additional procedures, checks and balances, and other projects that we would like to work on to make sure that our financial um, standing is good. Sorry, let me flip. Engineering costs, um, excuse me, are predicted to stay about the same as they are, and that's for a monthly meeting that we have on our sewer infrastructure. Um, administrative services, of course, I, I um, just mentioned that that was moved to the superintendent's department. Um, board of review um, is seeing a slight increase in board of review of payments for each meeting that they attend. They have not seen an increase, as I'm aware, in the 10 years that I've been here. Um, but that went up from um, $1,500 to just $2,000. Um, computer services remains about the same, and that includes um, three things, which includes our contractual services with our IT company, repair and maintenance of our equipment, and then all of the software that we use. Building and grounds is probably where you'll see the biggest um, increase. Um, this is also where uh, the treatment of Park Lake should appear. I'm making myself a note. Um, the the ten thousand two hundred dollars that we that we usually spend in newsletter costs in the administrative services department is being moved here. Um, you're going to see also um, the replacement of some an AC unit. Um, parking lot maintenance is in here. 
um, as well as floors in the township office and a parking lot paving project. Uh, I think that was a question earlier um, of West Wasser Park. And that certainly is, is something that we can all discuss further if that's in the best interest to move that project forward or not. Um, but the maintenance of our, of our parking lots is certainly uh, at the forefront of maintaining the township's infrastructure. Um, you will note that in the center of the budget, you have um, 101-301 and 101-336 is actually um, been moved to a public safety fund, so those are there for your reference, but um, they are not actually contained on those pages or contained later in the budget. Um, the Department of Public Works includes um, five full-time employees. Um, that is something that I brought, brought to you all earlier. Um, with the, retire the pending retirement of one of our UPW workers, we'll need to replace them. Um, so that would be five for a short period of time, and then we'll move again down to four. In here, you will also find um, the replacement of a 1999 Chevy 3500 work truck and the replacement of a Ford Escape, which is used as a township vehicle currently and driven by those um, that do township business. So those vehicles are needed to replace that. Moving to Parks and Recreation, um, there are plans here for a full-time employee that would cover, um, this is this is one of the items that you've not voted on yet, but maybe that position full-time is the recommendation that I've included here with a full-time salary and a benefits package. Um, so that increases this line. Um, that can be modified if you chose not to take that route with the new um, staffing I've already covered police and fire for you. Unless you have questions, I'm going to move past those two. Um, all of the funds in the back contain both a revenue and then an expenditure, such as the cemetery. Um, our, our sale of cemetery lots and plots and the Headstone Foundations actually does well to cover its expenses um, most of the time, and I believe that there is um, an amount in there that currently can be used for local improvement of the cemetery. Looking at the senior center, um, this one was difficult to project as, um, of course, it's been closed for almost a year and a half. Um, in looking at this, I was able to, um, at, at an earlier time, they were doing really well with revenues and bringing in, at times, um, significantly more revenue. This year, I counted only on the, the revenue that would be generated by meals that are being purchased by everyone. So I, I estimated that at about $20,000, and I believe that's low. They've been serving approximately 55 people a day. But in looking at the social distancing, I may have to reduce that number. So um, I went with a more um, conservative number of approximately 35 meals and 145 serving days. Moving to the farmer's market, you'll note that um, there is money um, in here for fundraising. Um, they hope to have the Farm to Fork Fall Feast next year, which is a significant um, amount of their fundraising that they do each year. Um, on the, rep, on the, excuse me, the expenditure side, there is no salary contained here, as I can, it's contained with the, the Parks and Recreation um, line, excuse me, the, um, department. Um, but there are funds here for all of the other activities that they've uh, conducted in the past, including community promotion. There was nothing, um, I, have, I have entered no revenue or expenditures in the DDA fund. And I'm sorry, this doesn't have page numbers. That's something I can correct for you as well. I'm just gonna refer to a page in my hand. 
Uh, based on the action in court last week, um, I put in here that it was dissolved in 2021. Um, the fund balance um, from that remains, but um, at this time, I did not um, schedule any um, revenue increases or expenditures for that department. Police Department has several um, lines and funds that um, account for auto theft prevention and um, drug um, fines, forfeitures, um, and, and drug um, programs. Um, I won't go through those individually as there is usually a set amount that comes from the state and then it goes back out in training. So they usually are. Um, whatever is brought in, they usually spend on training the officers. The last fund that I'll cover is our sewer fund. As you saw um, from the presentation that you had from um, Mr. Dursky uh, a couple of weeks ago, uh, he presented their budget here, um, and that has been included in our budget as well for our monthly payment for the fees um, of the service that they provide to us. And that is balanced in addition by a revenue um, which I increased according to the last um, study that we had done by, it was at the time it was called Umba and Associates, but now it's Baker Tilly. Um, I, re I went up um, a dollar per the rate schedule that they gave to us last time. Um, if we should receive the rate study from them prior to adopting this budget, um, we would be able to modify this budget at that time and with those numbers that they give us. The last two um, departments are water and street lights, um, and generally they take care of um, for, uh, obligations for those utilities. Um, so those are options. So if there are questions, I'd be happy to. I, I know I went through it quickly, but. <laughs> I, I know we'll dig into this more later, but just a formatting question. What's the difference between the requested budget and the recommended budget? In most senses, they're the same, but on some pages, they're not. At times, they are the same. Um, I request that all department heads, um, uh, such as the assessor, um, police chief, um, fire chief, um, provide me with numbers they think that their departments are going to run with um, in the next year. Um, ben, um, Z for um, part of the parks department and then public works. Um, so it's in general, it's usually a request from the department head. But what you're recommending to us is the final column on the yes, that's right. Exact. 22, 2022 recommended budget. Thank you. That's really helpful. Can you put some more ink in the printer? Because this is a little light. A little bigger would be nice. Bigger would be better? Yes. Darker would be better. Okay. Page numbers would be helpful. Yeah. Better new glasses. <laughs> Karen, um, I don't want me to tell you what I'll do this, but I'm not. Well, I'm going to remind the board because it's part of the treasurer's budget. If you remember, uh, if you look at the treasurer's budget, you'll see a section there where it talks about prior period of adjustment and what that is. Yes. And our Michigan tax tribunal cases that we have from the prior year. And if you think about this, and this is a 22 budget, so anything that you got done in 21, you'll pay for in 22. And uh, for instance, this year we we're, we're budgeted uh, significantly less, a lot less than that, that line item, about half. Uh, right now, MCP cases for, for some apartments for the COVID type things for, for 20, uh, we're going to pay for this year. It's going to be about out of our budget this year, it's going to be about $9,000. However, going forward in, in 2022, you will have the 2021 cases. We are in a land of golf courses. And if you remember our, our um, 
state government shut down our golf courses and the, their, their halls and everything they had, and it allowed through the DPP to be able to take and apply for tax uh, tribunal petition help for their taxes for the year, because obviously they weren't able to take and operate as normal. Um, and uh, with that being said, uh, they have uh, um, accepted the petitions and potentially we have the, uh, uh, we, we know right now we, we have the potential at the township level here, we're going we're gonna to have to pay back uh, about pretty close to $40,000, 30 to $40,000, mm -hmm. which is, which is, it's, it's by, it's, it's, it's the right thing to do. You, you'll ask, and for the people in the public is asked, that they're asking about this, the schools are held harmless. And so the schools don't have to pay back anything, anything in the way of education, whether it's the schools, LCC, or the ISDs, they, they're held harmless. They don't have to pay back. The state makes them whole. However, when it comes to the county and the townships or the villages or if it's a city, we have to pay their money back. And, and it's a prorated number, but it's, we're looking at somewhere between 36 to, to I don't know what the number is, it's about 38,000. And it's been it's been petitioned and it's been <coughs> successful, and we will pay that next year. Um, I don't have a problem paying it. I think if it's the raise of people who own these businesses, that's what the, the legislature did. That's what they voted on it, and we're all in this together. That's the way I feel about it. But that's that's part of our budget increase in the treasurer's mm -hmm. line. And it's about twice of what it was last year. Um, but that would, that's our responsibility. Yep. That's what we got to do. And that's. Um, <laughs> in Department 253 Treasurer, and it, 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 as he noted, it's prior period adjustment. This, this year's won't be so bad. We'll be under budget. Um, next year, we're, we're going to be right on because we're, we're going to budget for it. But it's going to be a bigger number. If you remember right, several years ago, Meyer 30 Acres had a big tax tribunal of a case against the town of Tobacco Meyer, and we settled out of court with that one. We saved a ton of money. We budgeted it for $150,000, $160,000. We didn't even, we didn't spend half that. Um, but I mean, that's, that's, uh, that's the law. That's what it is. And as a township, we are responsible for that. Like I say, the school systems are held harmless. So what that means is they don't lose any money, which that should be that way. The schools should get their money to run the schools. And we have to be able to approve for part of what we need to make up for that. Okay. So, um, we have to be done with this about the middle of December, correct? December 15th. December. We have to hold a public hearing by December 15th. By December 15th. Mm -hmm. Just so we discuss that in the break again. That's the end date. Okay. Each board I've witnessed do this does it differently. Some are done in November and some are done in December. But we have to be done by we December have, We have to be done by December 15th. Any questions that anybody like to put on how you'd like to move forward? I would rather do page by page, but that's the Okay. And we've done that before. I know. That seems to work well yeah. for board members. What about an hour before our meetings? Um, at the next meeting, we do an hour before we do a work session. And start working that way. Mm -hmm. And go page by page. And then we would have to end up maybe more time later on if we don't get it done. So you're thinking in two weeks? Yeah. Okay. I'd like a copy if I could. If I agree with you. Darker? No. That's okay. I don't have darker and I want a bigger. There's been a copy since. Yeah, I was going to say it's Friday. So. Yeah, because I picked up. Okay. No, it was in there at the end of the day. Oh, okay. It's in there at the day. You ran out of ink. Okay. Literally, I did. Why is it because I'm going to say something? It's probably the light. All right. But I can definitely, I, I do understand that it's difficult. Oh, okay. This the, Last year when I presented it, there was a, a, green, a green and white variation that alternated, and you may have found that more helpful. Um, yes, it I was. I back to that for you. Yeah. Very helpful. Yeah, I, I don't have a lot of options with the colors, but I, I can go to the green. I think it's green and gray or green and white. Um, so it alternates so you can see the lines. You don't have to use them the word. Um, and we can make it larger as well. Yes, I, I do understand that. Otherwise, I, I, I know. <laughs> Ryan. 
I won't be here at the next meeting, so I'd prefer if we don't do it then. Uh, at the end of the day, we got to move forward if we got to move forward. If it has to be then, that's fine. But if it can be not that meeting, would, that'll if, be helpful. If it's helpful, would um, us, we, we have a, a software we call Doodle um, that surveys all of you for available times um, that you, and days and times that you might be available to do a special meeting. Would you like to do that if you'd like to see it sooner than the next meeting? Would you like a special meeting or would you like to address it at the next I don't, I don't know how you want to do it. Is that the only meeting you're going to miss during the budget season? Yes. Well, it's early in the discussions. But the time goes in a hurry, too. And we're going to cancel the November 1st meeting. Yep. Good reminder. Yeah. So you'll be gone the 20th? So you're only talking September, into September. You don't know, you know, October, you have all October. You're talking five meetings. Um, I was going to say that adds up to about five. Some question I have this, I mean, when this has been done in the past, I, sometimes things like this are better handled in one larger chunk of time versus being piecemeal. I, so I'm just wondering how, how it's been done in the past and has that been affected? Well, you're all doing it. Nobody's ever hundred percent happy with the way it gets done. That's <laughs> what the outcome. That, that's that's the main thing you gotta understand. Yeah. But um, the thing with this is, if you, if you work on things sometimes for an hour or so, and things are a little bit contentious, you can take a break and go mm -hmm. to something else. Then you come back the next time, and, and maybe true. things are things that they see things in a little bit different light, and maybe it works better. But it's, with every group, it's different. And I'm not even going. I'm not saying anything about this group. I'm not even going to begin to even. Guess what this group idea is going to be? Good that's good or bad. But, but that that it, it, it just depends. A, 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 a ironic way that I'm calling here. <laughs> but, but, but it's, uh, I've seen it's ten different. I, I have. I've seen it almost ten times, and I've seen it. It's been ten different ways. It's been different ways. <laughs> yep. and, and you know, you got a lot of stuff you got to look at here. You got a lot of change. You got a lot of things you're going to do different from what you did in the past. Unfortunately, the stuff is not grow. I like to tell you it is, but that's my job. Um, but but, it, but it's, it's, you got a lot of things you can do here. you got a lot of good you can do for the, for the community. you got people who want CIB items. you got people who want other things. And there's a lot that goes on in the budget workshop. This is just an outlet. You know, this is the actual draft. Yeah, it's just a draft. I didn't bring mine in here, but it's going to change by time. You know, and then for you. It sure will. It's the... Uh, Put the put the test, and, and, uh, but I mean, so that's the more meetings you have, the better. And, and uh, I don't have a problem having a special meeting. I don't care if you're paid for it. That's what I don't care. I don't care if you're paid for it. Anything you want to do, it, I'm ready to do it. Okay. I'm, I'm looking forward to the discussions. Okay, but I I think. In the, the way we did it last year, which I was involved in, where we had smaller discussions. So if you, if you actually were out of town, you didn't miss that much. Uh, hour discussion, two hour discussion, come in an hour before the regular meeting because it's already on your calendar so you can get here at five instead of six. Uh, those things seem to, to, to work really well. But I'd like to recognize everybody in the beginning. There's a lot of financial horsepower sitting up here. And I want you all to know I'm going to use all of it. So, regularly again. So, we will communicate with you and look for some times that might work for you. If it, we'll, we'll try to find a, a couple of things that work for everybody um, we'll, and, and keep it so the public can access it as well. Mm -hmm. um, and so we'll, we'll do our best to accommodate um, all things um, and all people. Um, but we'll try to whittle away at, a, at an hour, hour and a half at a time and then, and then see if you want to change how we proceed with it. I like your comments about the public because I was the public yeah. when yep. we did 
budgets that were in set. And we're happy to make co so copies. We make copies for people. We'll also continue perfect. to make copies. It's available online. Some people prefer paper. We'll make copies for people anytime they come in. Or we didn't, we didn't even mail it to them. So we, we, try to, we try to be accessible to everyone. Okay. Any other? Comments? Take my mask off. There you go. Sorry, you can always go back. Any other one we start at, at the next meeting? Okay. We're going to move on to items of action, which is the 21 chancellor request. Okay. 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 Uh, before you, you have a uh, prepared um, uh, levy for taxes for the 2021 uh, tax rate request, otherwise known as an L4029. Um, it has to be prepared, approved. Assessor Beth Bach, he prepared the following form and we um, made um, Treasurer Wisplosser um, and Clerk Brenda Butler Calendar um, reviewed it. Um, <laughs> and then it said it's in your packet for consideration. Um, so as soon as we have those, we can look at those. Um, but it contains the township operating. Um, it contains police and fire millage and it contains um, the library millage. So we're going to have action on that tonight? We do. Yeah, it has to be Request L4029. Charter. 
she's got the police and fire in the public library. Yep. Those are our millages. Yep. Okay. okay. And from those millages, we garner the, dot, the top fund for the taxable value of the 479 yes. million, right? Okay. Right. All three. All three millages. Correct. No, that's what I mean. Okay. If you look, if you look at one, that's what, I, I penciled. They picked and made a copy of mine. I penciled it. And I saw it yeah, but if you look at twenty, <laughs> it's, it's, it's eighteen million nine hundred eighty-nine uh, thousand seven seven six seventy-eight difference from what twenty was. And what that means is that you had you had these properties that either were split or sold or built or new businesses. You got a couple new. Uh, Park buildings over here in Oklahoma, on Stanley Road, we make up a big chunk of that, 18 million. Um, that's all real personal and the long property. So, what that is, is that property that is that's, uh, every piece of property is basically half of that township. The only thing that's going to be different for 2023 and 2022, you'll see a difference. This year, the food bank, 2021 or 2022, um, then this year for 2021, you're going to see the food bank down here is going to be taxed um, because they're a 501c3. However, they did not, their attorneys did not take and file their paperwork in time to the okay. Michigan State Tax Commission. And so they will be taxed for a half a year's taxes at the time of assessment before the building was done. And by law, they have to pay that this year, starting next year in 2000. Um, 22, which will be the 21, they won't, they won't pay a dime other than special assessments. They have to pay special assessments, they have to pay the drain commission fees or anything like that that goes through by law, everybody has to pay them. So that one will come off there, but there's really not that much on there. Um, you're not going to see much of a reduction there. Okay. We have a motion, we've got a second. Second. Any other questions? No. Okay. Got a motion on a second, right over there. Nope. Yes. Ms. Bella Chandler, yes. Mr. Russ Grant? Yes. Mr. Pugh's Bless? Yes. Mr. Emma Regi? Yes. Mr. Benzie? Yes. Mr. Russ Lesser? Yes. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, what you have in front of you tonight is for your acceptance, not for your approval. Um, we will accept this and place on file if you're so inclined. The resolution on the VAP um, Township Public Library Millage proposal dated August 18th, 2021. And this, of course, aids in our preparation of the L4029. But the VAP Charter Township um, Public Library intends to pursue a millage um, and um, a new millage, excuse me, it, I shouldn't say new, it's a renewal. It's not a, but a renewal means that it's, when you say now you're asking for 10 years, right? It's a renewal. It's at the same rate as the previous. Same year. rate, but longer 10 years instead of yes. before. It's considered okay. a renewal. Yep. Hmm. What would you call it? Just a longer period of time. Okay, so um, they forwarded us the document, um, and that is in your packet, I hope, um, <laughs> after botching the 4029. Um, and I wanted you, because you have not dealt with this issue as a whole, but um, as, as independents and as residents over the years, I provided additional detail, but we have agreements in place to um, levy, um, collect, and disperse um, that money. Um, to the public library, and you'll know at the time, <laughs> Trustee um, Hewins Bliss was actually the treasurer of the library at that time, so that agreement was signed by him as well. So uh, those agreements remain in place. Okay, we did. Oh. Uh, no, I just should have, I realized now during um, conflict of interest, I should have stated my spouse is on the library board. I'm saying it for the record, I know you know. So with that, I would make a motion to accept the, the millage. <laughs> All right. 
Mr. Yes. Mr. Yes. Mr. Yes. Mr. Alan Yes. Mr. Ben Yes. Mr. Wisconsin? Yes. Mr. Hall? No. Ted Thank you. Um, I wanted to report um, on Thursday, September 2nd, 2021, Judge Schlegel granted the Township Board's motion to dismiss the case um, of Will White versus Bath um, Board of Trustees. Um, Judge Schlegel denied Will White, Mr. White's motion to intervene, and Judge Schlegel's decision resolved all pending claims and, and closed the case. Um, he has a specific amount of time to appeal, of course. Um, and our legal counsel is finalizing um, the seven-day order, um, which should be finalized shortly and then signed by Judge Schlegel. Um, if Mr. White fails to appeal in a time frame, um, then um, the case will be settled and over with. I just wanted to note that in public. Um, many of you attended the, um, the case in court, um, but I don't think there's been any official announcement of that, so I wanted to cover that um, for the public. Um, our new planner, Miles Robler, um, began last week. Um, he has quickly made good work of organizing the office and getting to know everyone. Um, I believe he's been already meeting with um, developers and residents of um, the township. Um, and um, doing, doing really well and fitting in very well, of course. Um, he and his fiance look to move to the township here in the next, I believe, week or so, um, or a couple of weeks at the, at the, late, at the latest, but um, so he'll soon be a member of our community. Um, I'm actually glad that the Park Lake um, Roadhouse um, was brought up. Um, that is actually being um, demolished. Um, unfortunately, asbestos was found and we tested that for asbestos. So there will be some asbestos abatement before the demolition can proceed. But currently, um, Pitch is the company that won the bid to demolish the house, um, is obtaining the permits that they need, the soil erosion permits and the demolition permits they need to move forward with that. Um, and it will be returned to basically um, fill dirt and it'll be graded um, so that we can plant seed or, or do whatever it is that we embark on next with that. But most likely it'll just be grass for the time being. An update on Farm to Fork Fall Feast. Uh, unfortunately, due to COVID, um, that group has decided to cancel that event. Um, I do think it's a smart decision, but it's an unfortunate decision. Um, as that is one of the major fundraising events for that group. Um, they are looking positively towards the summer of 2022 to host some type of event, um, like a summer feast or something of that nature. So I'm excited to see what they come up with and, and bring to the community. Um, Safe Routes to School continues to make progress. Um, today our group met, um, led by Trustee Elmerigi, so I hope I'm not stealing your thunder. Um, but they set dates for a walking audit um, of our sidewalk infrastructure, and they also scheduled a kickoff meeting. Uh, both of these events will take place at the beginning of October, and we will begin promoting these events to the community, um, most likely with a, a sewer bill insert that will be going out tomorrow. So <laughs> we're very excited um, to have some concrete dates that we can promote to the community and have people come out and join us for, for those because I do think it'll be a great improvement um, for our children that are walking to school. Um, I'm sorry tonight for the, <laughs> the lack of documents being left out of the, of the board packet, but um, I will always start to be better, so hopefully um, um, budgets will be in bigger print and <laughs> alternating <laughs> colors. Okay. And um, I'm going to put some ink in the printer, trust me, Betsy. Yes, I will. So, and I'll number those pages so that we can all um, have an easier time communicating with each other about what's on the pages. Any of you have questions? I'm certainly Oh, I got one. How did they tell you? Are they on schedule to 
get the house done? Um, they are. Um, the soil erosion permit, I believe, was submitted today. Or maybe. Okay, so it'll go out this week. Um, everything's moving forward well. I don't think there have been any surprises in addition. I, I think we suspected there was an asbestos in the building. We just yeah. didn't have confirmation of that. It's unfortunate that we'll have to um, abate that before we can proceed. But of course, that's for everyone's safety involved. So yeah. we'll take care of that. But yeah, it's, it's proceeding well. Good. Thank you, Chair. It was great. Okay, my first question is who is going to answer my first questions that I asked in the beginning of this meeting, or should I not expect to get any answers from those? And if not, then why should I ask the question? So I, I think I can, I, I, if you don't mind. I, no. Oh, I love it. Yeah. So um, <laughs> the, the one I recalled, and I didn't answer, I'm sorry, because I was just talking about the house, was the Board of Trustees approved purchasing that house, I believe, in um, late 2019. Okay. Um, so the Board approved that, It was, but, but it was the previous board in late 2019. Oh, yeah. um, and, and we just were able to purchase it from Mr. Gupta. Um, so there was no... You know, I, I, I'm all, I was all for it personally, and as, you know, former Parks and Rec, yeah. I was all for it too. I just wondered, you know, where did that yeah. subjective argument come from? And I understand now that it was a closed door meeting and something that important and that expensive should have very well had a, you know, public feedback at least. And I just, I wondered, where did you get the money to do that? It had been $100,000. And did we get the property along the lake also? No. Which I think was more important than the house, but... It, it, and, and there, I think, believe there were several board members that would have agreed with that statement, but we were not able to. He split that piece ah. off and did not okay. have that piece for sale. I mean, that would be time. perfect to increase the size of the bolt launch. We oh, agree. Oh, <laughs> before I forget everything else, I want to thank you for doing a great job. I think you're doing fantastic. Thank you. And Taylor, too. <laughs> um, I will answer your question about, um, I did not include any CIP projects. Um, I presented the budget here. Um, it, it's my opinion that we should maintain what we have as a, a first. Um, I do understand your arguments about Wiswasser Park. Mm -hmm. um, the problem with the limestone currently is the way that it, it, there's more to the project than just the paving, but it's the grain as well. Right. The actual the park sits lower, and that limestone often will run down in and create a very slimy um, surface. Um, on the sidewalk, and we actually shovel the line that, that kind of settles in the sidewalk. So we're looking to also improve the grade. Either that or um, the drainage would be, would yeah. be perfect. So but, it's, it's, but, yeah. we encompassed it with a, a paving. But I Anything we can do to not have asphalt would be, would be fantastic. Yeah. And, and at but, this yeah. time for me, and I, I won't say anything but what lime um, stone, but it's, the limestone is creating a problem as well. It's creating a very well, slick surface. Crushed um, asphalt would be another alternative. So we'll, we'll look to do something. Or not crushed asphalt, excuse me, crushed concrete. Concrete, okay. Yes, that's, that's something. Okay. Um, and I guess as long as you and I are talking, um, what's going on with Parks and Rec? Um, so I did not have time uh, prior to this meeting, but I will be bringing back a proposal along with the budget. I include the numbers in the budget, but it has to be approved in order to carry through. Um, would be to, my intention would be to hire someone that's in a full-time uh, position that would encompass both Parks and Rec and the Farmer's Market. But board members have asked for a more complete plan in order to move forward. Yeah. I, I just see something, you know, and, and you may or may not, this is a, my third question is going to be coming up next, but uh, I want to help. You know, I'm a, I'm a lifelong citizen here and, uh, and I applied, I was asked to apply for a Parks and Rec appointment. And uh, Al and Brenda and Stephen and Joe all uh, voted no. And I just wondered, am I, am I a pariah or should I? There are six other vacancies here in the in the township: planning commission, housing commission, public art commission. And, you know, I'd like to help, but should I not? Should I not do anything if I'm going to be you'd be voted against? And is there a, is there a place I can put a plaque? Because I think I'm the only person that ever been turned down to volunteer for a 
for a committee. No, you're We're not the only one. <laughs> <laughs> and and just, for, just for human betterment, is, is it something that you feel I was qualified? Um, you know, I've got decades of experience. Stephen, you're the one with all the answers tonight. How about if you answer that? Why did you vote no against my appointment? Why, why, why am I the one with all the answers? Well, you just told us. You said if you have any questions, feel free to ask. ask. And I've known you, your whole, you know, our whole lives, so just give me some insight. Tell me what I need to do to improve myself or... I don't think it's about you. I think it's about the, the, the group as a whole. With, um, Parks and Rec, I think they're, they're looking at redoing things as no longer the Parks and Rec. Right. With what they're doing here, they're looking at recreational. I haven't landed on. I have not landed on. Uh, but it would. Well, it, it would combine. You don't even know what the name of it is. Yeah, it would. I know. Well, as I, I just as we we were waiting patiently for this time to to um, ask questions again, I diligently looked on the on the website, and uh, there's still two vacancies on Parks and Rec. That's correct. But the, the proposal that I that I have uh, floated so far involves combining parks and recreation. Right. The, the committee, because it's no longer parks, it's recreation and farmers market. Right. Um, combining those two committees. When I, the, I it has to have been about a decade. I was on parks and rec. We never did anything with recreational activities like Zumba and touch football and stuff like that. So what I would recommend, and that was one of the reasons I applied, was because I wanted to help reorganize and put some emphasis on parks and green space, like the county does. I mean, that's what the county has, parks and green space. And the, and the, the new uh, uh, position that you want to fulfill, I think that would be a great opportunity for somebody to have the recreational side of it. Mm -hmm. Somebody to do the, you know, the community efforts to get people into touch football and to adult basketball and Zumba. And I see all the other things at the community center. So. That was it. Uh, not really, but <laughs> so should I, I? I guess my the bottom line is: should I not apply for any of these other positions? Everybody should apply for anything you want to apply for. Okay, and when will we find out, or how will we find out if we're not appointed? Why weren't we appointed? Do we not qualify? Do Probably we? Same way you're doing it right now. Okay, and have I found out yet? I don't know. I don't think we know what we're doing. With that's okay. Yeah. That you know, if if, if yeah. somebody would have said, hey, you know, we really don't know what we're doing with it. What do you got? Seven members of the, of the farmers market, Ryan. What do we got? Seven members, seven. eight, seven members of there, and what do you got on parks market? Another seven. Two vacancies. Well, two vacancies. If you get to find the two boards together, we, you, you can't very well put fourteen people together. Mm -hmm. And you're not going to really accomplish a lot when you do that because you're not going to have much of a. Of, you're going to have a lot of different ideas. Well, I guess to gain the public's respect and... and you you and talked about parks. This parks are no longer a part of parks and rec. Parks are all controlled by the DPW and it's part of the township. And that's something that... Why would you take that that, that away from, from the public? We're in a new phase here. For people like myself who's, who's been here for a while, um, uh, we're, we're doing new things and we're coming up with new ideas. And, and we're trying to digest this and figure out what's the best way to do it. Well, I, I think the best way to do it is to have an advisory committees. So and, uh, can I step in here? I, I just want to apologize because I, I feel like I've done a disservice to you and to my fellow board members by even making the motion. Uh, knowing full well that we were going to uh, uh, dissect our farmer's market board and our farmer's market board and then create a new structure. Mm -hmm. And so I, I feel like my fellow board members, I, I, their actions were in service of not adding something to a, a, a committee that uh, was imminently going to be dissolved uh, as we were going to form a brand new committee. Which I think well, I hope you understand my position. It was like me jumping for a carrot in the total darkness. You know, you don't know where the carrot's at. So, so how do you know? How do you know? So, Mr. Hockey, I please blame me for that. that no, I'm not blaming you. You would be the... <laughs> you voted for me. <laughs> I mean, if it was a straw poll vote and you knew Parks and Rec was going to be no more, why would you do me the disservice of not appointing me? Just say, well, we're going to reorganize this, you know, and uh, to be very blunt, I was hurt. I, uh, I've done 20 years of community service here for you people, all of us people. And, uh, and yes, Park Lake, I, I harp on it a lot, but it's uh, going to be here long after we're all gone. And it is, I keep saying this, 
Yeah, well, I know. But I'm using up the other two minutes that I, I gave in the first one. <laughs> but anyway, so that was, that was my, uh, my quandary there. And I still, you know, I, I think you could, you could have done it a lot more eloquently than how it was done or how it wasn't done. But anyway, and again, I want to thank you, Karen, because she's been around. Yeah. Going up. <laughs> thank you. Sorry to take this off. But thank you for your It's quite possible that Ben's going to need some advice from the community as we look at parks and parks expansion. And so I would encourage you to encourage Ray to continue his community service and his passion for the community and give him some hope. Um, on the Senior Center, uh, I think a vaccination clinic is a great idea, especially when boosters are available to our seniors. So we can offer a clinic with the health department for boosters and then hopefully catch people who have not been vaccinated at that point. But my biggest concern right now is the Delta variant. And I think the only way we're gonna catch people is to take their temperatures. And I would like to add the protocol that when they pay their money and they sign in, their temperature is taken. We know if you have a temperature, you gotta go home. Just my own opinion. And then also, um, Karen talked about reducing the number of people that we see so that we can increase social distancing and that that might reduce revenue, uh, domino effect. Um, the Senior Center is licensed for 85. And if we do reduce the number of people that we are serving, we are still getting 55 people a day for lunch. That doesn't mean that they can't still come in and get their lunch and go home. I do not want to discourage our seniors from getting a great nutritional meal at a great price from people that they trust because we've reached our capacity as far as seating is concerned. So I would hope that we would encourage people to continue to come to get their meals even if, this, even if we've surpassed our capacity for seating. Um, I was also going to ask um, when are we going to hire a recreation director? Have we, or a leisure time <laughs> coordinator? <laughs> Have we set a timeline for that? The, the position has not been approved. Right, so is that two weeks coming back to the board in two weeks? Yes. Uh-huh, okay, good. Um, and I was gonna say before, I know I'm taking up your time, but I know that you had brought up the issue of having um, clinics, chat clinics, and I do appreciate that you were pushing for those um, and that it's coming to fruition. So no, I just think it's a great idea. And then in looking through the budget, I can't find that $77,000 that we captured for the DDA. And so I wonder where that money is and who it is assigned to under what department. Um, my experience over the last 12 years working with the planning board I'm sorry, but the planning board doesn't really function very well when it comes to community-based projects, which are citizen initiatives. I mean, if you want to buy a fire truck or if you want to uh, do something that is considered a capital improvement that doesn't involve necessary, necessarily a citizen initiative, that's different. But the planning board doesn't do very well with citizen initiatives. So I would hope that we could find a place for that DDA money where something would happen that is driven by the community. Thank you. My name is Meg Ritchie and I am on Outer Deck. Um, there's a few things I excuse me, I'm kind of a wreck because uh, Mr. Benzie, you mentioned you weren't in your lazy boy earlier. I was in my lazy boy earlier watching you all on my telephone. <laughs> so I got up to come down to uh, make a statement for the second portion. Um, two things that, that really kind of stuck in my craw 
And one of them, as Judy just brought up, was the mask, the masking at the at the senior center. And you all have mentioned that you feel like this is hard for you, or this is a tough situation. Well, this is tough on, on all of us. And it's time to stop putting it off and hoping that someone is going to come along with a better idea. Uh, people are making hard decisions all over the place. Uh, you know, people are making their own policies, uh, restaurants, schools, universities. They're, they're all stepping up and saying, okay, you don't have to get a vaccination. We're not mandating you to get a vaccination. But our policy is if you are going to come into our facility, our restaurant, our school, then you agree that you have done that, that you have either been vaccinated or you have religious or um, doctor's excuse as to why. And then maybe you just pick up your meal to go. But it's time to, to stop doing that. Stop waiting for somebody else to come along, um, like Karen, to come up with uh, an idea to make it all easier for you. People are not going to be happy. The ones that are the loudest, the angriest, the most vocal are going to be the ones that disagree with you or disagree with mass mandates in my experience. Um, also, to, along those same lines, I thought it might be a good idea uh, that uh, if, we're, if we were doing testing or uh, ha have a policy at the senior center, uh, to maybe also make that open to the public where people could uh, have a tent outside or overhang where you could be tested just for the community. Um, to, uh, let me see what my quick notes here. Um, but um, I'm not sure if I'm correct about this, but I'm thinking, is your next meeting in November? Not two weeks from, okay. All right, forget that part then. Um, also, something that happened earlier in, in the meeting was uh, Ms. Hildebrandt was, uh, I, I read part of the packet uh, this evening. I could not obviously do the budget. I wouldn't know what I was looking at even even if I did. But the part about Miss Miss Hildebrandt, um, the change in, in her job description without that being brought up to the uh, general community, to the public, and uh, and I know you've already taken a vote on this and, and passed the changes to where she doesn't even uh, answer to the supervisor anymore. Um, if anything, I would just ask that you revisit that, that maybe you rethink that. Uh, I, I, you know, her, her job requirements might not be for the public to decide, but I think her, the changing of her job requirements, um, should the public should at least be notified. Um, so I'm going to ask that you recall that vote and rethink it, maybe revisit it in two weeks if, if we are going to have that meeting. Um, and one final thing uh, was to uh, back up Judy on her request for uh, non-action of the Park Lake uh, 
just about everything <laughs> that they ask for. You know, we control uh, the path around the outside, the non-motorized vehicle portion, and, and I'm afraid the list goes on. Uh, I, as I mentioned, lived on Outer Drive, so weed control is not even an option for me to buy in on, whereas I know it is for people on other sides of the lake. They can buy in or uh, get a weed control specialist to come by and spray. Um, me and all the other residents on Outer Drive, that is not available to us. It's just too filled in. They can't even get there to spray. Um, so I can go on with that one for another hour and a half. But um, those are the three things that I wanted to touch on with you all and that got me up out of my lazy boy to come down here. And I hope you take it with which it was intended. Thank you very much. Thank you. Anybody else? Good. All right. We're working on the adjournment. I believe. Oh, my board member comments. Sorry about that, guys. Jason, trustee, I'm Ricky. Your board member comments. Uh, I do want to agree with um, part of what uh, Judy said. Uh, I think our strategy process is broken. So I think the process is not the planning commission. Um, and so I would I would encourage us to uh, take some time to finally figure out a good process uh, when that does honor the time that people put into creating uh, proposals. Thank you. Mr. Benzie? So I'd just like to thank everybody for sitting through all of this tonight. You stayed a long time. For those of you that are left, thank you very much. Thank you, everybody. No comment. No comment. No comment. Oh, no. <laughs> 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 All right. I also want to thank everybody for staying for the length of time. Meg, that was really good to get on your chair and come. I hope you'll do that more again. Uh, and others, Judy, okay, thank you. Yes, have to go like this, <laughs> but much appreciated. So thank you all for staying and for coming. Just thanks for coming, no comment. Ditto. <laughs> That's easy. I right, okay. need to vote for an I move to adjourn. Second. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Is She's Mr. Rose Kranz? Oh, yeah, here. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> Mr. Benzie? Yes. Mr. Wisswasser? Yes. Ms. Howe? Yes. Ms. Butler Chandler? Yes. Thank <laughs> you.